All right. Good evening, afternoon, or morning, one and all, depending on your time zone. This is another episode of Rendezvous with Rico. And tonight I have with me, um, I want to say aristocracy, but I, someone told me that it's it's pronounced like aristocracy, like aristocracy. Yeah, it's a play on the word aristocracy. So mm -hmm. it's just pronounced the exact same way. So it's aristocracy, like aristocracy. I, see, I, saw, I figured as much. I figured it was a play on the words for aristocracy. Yeah. Yeah. I, but they made they they made me second guess myself. You know who thought of the name? A lot of people oh. don't know this, but because okay. I didn't come up with the name itself, I was known as Eris before. Um, mm -hmm. But I knew that there were some other heiresses in like the online sphere and stuff, like Cass Eris mm -hmm. and that. So mm -hmm. um, it was Destiny that gave me really? the name aristocracy. Yeah. God damn. Fucking, was, I, I had a similar thing. I didn't come up with the name Rico Rants, right? Oh, really? I no, I was workshopping a name uh, uh, with my buddy, and she was like, uh, "Cause I, the names I thought of were stupid, uh, like the Rico Show or some shit." I was just like, "That's fucking fucking mm -hmm. lame." Uh, but then she was like, "What about Rico Rants?" And I was like, "She was like, because you know, you go by Rico and you rant all the time." I was like, that's fucking perfect. I'm mad I didn't think of that. I love the alliteration. It always sounds nice when someone does what? that. You right? Know? Yeah. So I gotta always gotta have somebody to bounce stuff back and back and forth with. You never know what you might come up with. Yep. Yep, exactly. Because I was gonna call myself Eris Theory. That was the idea. Cause I is a play on error theory, because it's like my least favorite type of philosophy. Mm -hmm. And um and I told that to Destiny and he said, no, you're a retard. No one knows what error theory is. Don't do that. <laughs> so uh, I did, jokes I on him because no one knew what an aristocracy was anyways. <laughs> well, the two things on that I want to say, I I for sure, sure as fuck don't know what an uh, error theory is. Um, I didn't want to, I didn't want to admit that, but you know, it is what it is. Most people don't. And it's honestly, it's such a dumb theory. That's not even worth learning. It's not even worth getting into. Yeah, I get you. <laughs> Um, ah, there we go. Good boy. And, um, but I do know what an aristocracy is. You know what I mean? It, uh, at least have cool. a vague, at least I have a vague idea of what one is. Yeah. Oh, uh, so first off, you know, welcome back to the game. You said you haven't done this in a long while. Oh yeah. Yeah. It's been, I think the last time I got, I talked to someone on stream was like, I know it's is Wick and it was definitely before the new year. So it's been been a long time. I can dig. I can dig. Uh, yeah, I have been. I, I speaking of Wick, I just had him on the show uh, not too long ago. I debated him about free speech. Oh, that's cool. Oh, mm -hmm. I, I'm guessing you're a little more left on free speech, and he was a little more right. I he's a free speech absolutist. I yeah. am not. Yep. And I I don't know if that where that puts me left or right. I don't really care. I just, I, I know where I stand. And the long story short, we had, we just kind of agreed to disagree because the, the difference isn't in like what specifically, because both were the free speech absolutism, free speech absolutism. I have a list, so forgive me. I will trip over my words. Um, and uh, my position of, you know, uh, both censorship and more accountability for the things people say online there's pros and cons to both. And I, cause I made sure to just, I told him multiple times, I was like, you're not wrong. Neither of us, I would say are wrong on the facts is in the potential, you know, shit going South in some way, shape or form. It's just the difference is that we fundamentally, uh, the difference is more fundamental and our, and our, just our personal views on how things should go, because I don't think either of us are wrong on the facts. And he's, and he said the same. So I was just like, Hey, you know what? That that's it, really. There's nowhere to go from here because you fundamentally believe this is why how this should go, and I and I don't. And there's nowhere to go from there. Yeah, and I think that like people's backgrounds really play into when it comes to free speech. It always does. Um, the Wick comes from like a. I think he used to be Mormon, right? And mm -hmm. I don't know if he's still Mormon, but I know like um, he was raised with like immense and a huge part of a lot of like the Mormon church. There's a lot of propaganda and a lot of controlling of speech and stuff and mm -hmm. it, it's hard for me to say that if i'd been raised the same way maybe i would agree with him like yeah. you know no, who knows, I get you. right 
Um, yeah. So I definitely come out more towards you uh, ideologically when it comes to that. But I under yeah. understand. I still respect um, his attitude towards it. Really? I, I'm, I'm glad to hear that. Yeah, no, my, my thing is I've seen enough, too much people get hurt because of uh, people's mm -hmm. freedom to just say, uh, like, on a, you know, it's all old meme. You're like, do you really think people just go on the internet and tell lies? Yes. Absolutely. Yes. People yeah. will. People do. They will happily. And there's very little account of accountability for doing so. Very little recourse. Like a case, the case we brought up of Alec Jones during the debate. I'm like, the cases like that of accountability are extremely rare. That doesn't mm. happen. You know what I mean? More often than not, you really can just go online and just say damn near whatever you want about whoever you want to, whomever you want to, and all incentives point towards rewarding people for, for doing exactly that. And so a lot of yeah. people get hurt. Oh, yeah, and this is basically the first time that it, we're in a situation like that in history. Like, throughout history, there used to always be blocks that kept someone, um, even in very free speech absolutist cultures. And there were, there were a ton of those cultures. But even in those cultures, there were still just natural blocks that kept someone from just being able to spew whatever they wanted to without consequence, whether it was a class um, thing, like an economic class block, or, um, you know, and there's obviously consequences to that. That's obviously not always good. <laughs> um, yeah. Or an education one, um, uh, or just a technological one, right? Like the most you could do in, you know, in Athens was go to the market square and just start screaming out around the market. Um, and who are you going to, it's going to spread. And if everyone thinks that it's bullshit, in the market, right, which if exactly. it's a really dumb idea is probably going to happen, it's not really going to spread to the rest of Greece. Um, but now that's not the case. Now, like anyone can just publish. Everyone's their own publisher. And while I feel like if I had, this is one of those instances that I would have probably been totally for that before I saw the consequences of it. You oh, know? Like, yeah. It sounds yeah. like a great idea, but now I see the consequences of it. And I'm like, I actually feel like the consequences of it are a little more severe than the consequences of the alternative. Um, yeah, it's, especially, it's fucking terrifying. Yeah, it's very scary. And it's very scary if you're a minority. Um, it's very scary uh, just in general the way there's very little consequences to uh, to the lies that you see online. Yeah, no, fucking, uh, on that note, with regards to just, you know, jumping into the town square and yelling whatever the fuck you want, you know, before the internet, you said some shit about somebody that was that they obviously they knew not to be true, even if they didn't think it was true, even if it was true or whatever. You said somebody says if you said anything and the person was there, they could knock you the fuck out, right? They could yeah. fight you. But now on the internet, you can from from total anonymity, or you could just come out and imply someone's a fucking pedophile, and then put that person's life in actual danger. I have seen the wackiest shit too, like behind the scenes, like how people streamer, like even just streamers, they will be so cruel to one another online. And then they meet up in real life and they're so nice. They're like civilized, friendly human beings, smiling at each other, hugging at TwitchCon. Like they put everything in the past. And I'm like, you guys were almost getting each other killed online. This is wacky. Um, but it's just like, we're, you, you know, like when, when we interact anonymously online or just like through a computer, like we don't have those normal human things that stop us from telling yeah. us like, eh, maybe don't say that, you know, maybe, maybe that's don't. a thought that you think and not say. Hey, oh, for sure. No. And I think a lot of that, it's not so much they, you know, bury the hatchet. It's just that, you know, it's easy to talk shit and say crazy stuff mm -hmm. online, but in person, you, you are a lot less likely to fucking do that shit. Right. Like yeah. motherfuckers can yell at me and call me a dumbass online. Sure, you meet you meet three hundred pound big uh, muscular tattooed me and try saying that to my face. I might not hurt you because I'm not a, I'm not I don't try I don't just hurt people for insulting me. But you're a lot less likely to just because you you're, you're afraid of that happening to you, or yeah. maybe you, or maybe you're just way more polite in person just because that's just what you were taught to do. That's your instincts. That's just how you are. But online, you get the freedom to be something that you don't get to be in public, you know, that you don't get to be to somebody's face. You can just be as awful and mean and call people whatever the fuck you want because you it's, it's cathartic to be able to do so. And yes, Jay, I weigh 300 pounds. I am fucking heavy. 
Yeah. And I can't express how unique that is in, in history, right? Like we see like patterns throughout history, like, you know, where things repeat and repeat and repeat. This is not something that's repeated, right? No. Every culture, in every culture, in every aspect, like I, I have never read about a culture or a community um, throughout all of history that didn't have consequences for behaviors, um, that didn't have uh, it was something that literally it's the defining characteristic of the homo sapien compared to the other human species. Like I've read that, like literally one of, one of the current theories um, is that uh, is that the one of the prime reasons, even though the homo sapiens weren't as smart as the Neanderthals, they weren't yeah. as strong as the Neanderthals. And like, yeah, they literally like they weren't as smart. People don't even realize that. But we still beat them. And the theory right now is we beat them because of how good we were at organizing and socializing. And a huge part of that was casting out the bad people, right? Casting out the people that stole the bananas. Like, and um, and now someone can really, it's like the first time that someone could just steal bananas all they want and they can just completely get away with it with anonymity. And I say this, like, I realize this is so hypocritical coming from me of all people because I'm incredibly anonymous, um, but I think anonymity online is like just it's a nasty thing, um, yeah. and yeah. It, a lot of these problems would be fixed without that because humans just we just don't function. We need consequences for actions. I need consequences for actions. We all do. Um, yeah, uh, for sure. It, without the absence of accountability is the fundamental a uh, problem with uh, with a lot of things in our society mm -hmm. you know, in every sector of society but especially now in the internet age you know what i mean the the absence of accountability the freedom to just do whatever you want say whatever you want is is in itself just it, it brings a, it, it incentivizes the worst fucking behavior you mm -hmm. know what i mean especially when you're rewarded for it because as i've said before to other people is that like for one these social media companies they they know and and I, just before i get to this point we pe we humans unfortunately like being angry we do we we it's cathartic to be angry and to be angry at someone and to snap at someone to yell at somebody to say this that and the third it feels fucking good that's why inflammatory clickbait bullshit um uh gets the most traction every time you know what I mean? You can put out just positive, hey, look at me and my cat. The, the, yeah, that might fucking get, get, uh, get go viral, but very rarely, compared, mm -hmm. at, least, at least compared to inflammatory statements. Anything that, that can piss people off is a type of shit that will be rewarded by the algorithms, by social media, and by people themselves. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So all incentives point to being as inflammatory as possible. That's why we have what we call shock jocks and shit. You can mm -hmm. they're, they're all you will be rewarded for it. You'll be rewarded for being an asshole. You'll be rewarded for pissing people off. You will be rewarded for it. That's in a way that I would say like, is not the, case what in the past. What they do to a generation being raised with that, like that's yeah. wild. Yeah, and would you fancy yourself a historian of sorts or just someone who just takes a, a, a you know vast interest in it? It depends on what your definition of historian is. Like, there's a, that's a whole debate in and of itself. I just call myself so I don't get yelled at. I I just call myself a a history buff or a history lover. I picture you. I picture you. Oops, fuck my list. I <laughs> figured you would say that that you were a history buff. That, that, that's yeah. That's yeah. a because it, it obviously definitions distinctions with regards to you know what is and isn't a historian. Blah blah blah. Is its own fucking conversation, but that's not what we're here to have. That would be no, no fun, and really boring for ninety percent of humans. So, yeah, <sighs> yeah, no, that that is that is uh, some academic, you know, semantics type debate. That is, I that I am personally not like I could have it, but I don't want to. Yeah, waste, <laughs> waste of all of our time. I, I, I'm, I, in, just in general, semantic debates are so stupid. I, uh, I like they they make a sense, I guess, in linguistics or something, but. Uh, it yeah. it drives me crazy. The one of the there was like this big debate that happened last week or like a panel um, that uh, that happened with I don't know if you watched it. It was on Vosh's channel with uh, Doe was Doe was there. Loner Box was there. Mm -hmm. They were like um, Wick was there. And a few people they were debating um, like violence and yeah. Like, I I, I have that on my watch later. I will watch that later. Oh yeah, yeah. It was a good one. Um, and. But like that entire thing 
like the core of that debate was a semantics argument um, on what defines violence, right? And, right. and everyone, but everyone knew that if you were to argue about the semantics, no one would watch. It would be boring as fuck. So no mm-hmm. one touched it, even though it was like the elephant in the room, even though that was the real issue. Yeah, no, it's because yeah, at the end of the day, people still want to be, want to be entertaining to some degree. And that debate is just, unfortunately, very boring and everyone knows it. Mm-hmm. Um, and on that note, fucking what I wanted to say, going back a bit, was that you know, with regards to your anonymity, I don't think you're hypocritical for because you you would le- you at the very least acknowledge the dangers of an- anonymity. You are aware of it. Uh, there are a lot of people who you could, could care less. You know what I mean? And it, which is, it, on that note, this is why I'm like, I understand the arguments about you can't be anonymous online, you know, because people would be a lot more likely to fucking, uh, a lot less likely to be shitty if they had to put their names attached to the words that they say. But I, 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 I disagree on that because for me, it's like, no, you can be anonymous. The social media companies know who you actually are. They know. And, uh, Lee, and uh, I know a lot of people know this, but in the event that a social, that a anonymous account or whatever fucking says this, that, or the third about you, um, you can have, you can, you know, go to court and whatnot and have, and the court can subpoena the social media company for your actual information for you. Oh, yeah. They can, they can, they can find you easily, mm-hmm. easily. You just have to go to the courts to do it, but you do have a legal recourse to basically force someone out of their anonymity if they're uh, if what they did is severe enough which is what you have that happened prove. that actually happened to me <laughs> so. really yeah I, we don't like have a, to do that. but yeah that it's actually happened to a lot of streamers behind closed doors and people don't people don't like to talk about it because of course if you talk about it it's more likely to happen right um yeah but uh yeah it's a it's a big way that people get controlled or blackmailed and stuff um, where people threaten to sue you for really dumb shit that then know that they'll lose. Um, but they'll but, get your uh, real get identity your out of it. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. It's it's a clever little thing. You know, at the very least, that's, that's fucked. No, I, if it was up to me, I'd be like, no, unless you have fucking, uh, I'm not going to reveal this person's identity unless you bring a, a solid fussy fucking case from the get mm-hmm. from the jump, you know what I mean? That but that that's if I had a had a say in how that goes. Yeah, I had to get like an actual like court order and everything to protect my information, which you can do if anyone's watching this. Like you can most countries you can go like basically put a protection on your name. Um, where like basically blocking those companies from revealing your information and stuff. So even if you do get sued, even if it's for a good reason, they're gonna sue like Jane Doe. Or Bingo. Dodo or I don't yeah. Just not your I don't real know what, identity. What do you get you get sued as if you're trans? Whatever works. Whatever whatever works. Uh the way, the way I see it. But the point is you, you the, but the the but the point is that you can you do have legal recourse to protect your anonymity even in the case yeah. of the the case being put against you being legit. Mm-hmm. Fascinating. Yeah. I, I didn't know that. Yeah, it's a good idea for anyone who's a public figure to go do. Um, oh yeah! Oh yeah! Uh, with an anonymous, uh, you know, thing, public figure. Yeah, one yeah. of the things that sucks is there's like there's no course online on like how to be a public figure. Like, no, God, um, no. So there's only there's fuck. courses on how to become one, but not how to like survive it. So uh, f- fuck, there's barely there's no course on how to just be online. Like really, yeah. how to really manage being online. Uh, there's one thing I've learned is that we're all much learning as we go and making this shit up as we go. And I mm-hmm. yeah, I wish there were courses on this shit. Like for one, if it was up to me, I would mandate fucking uh, OPSEC be taught in schools uh, with regards to internet. Like the, with the military, we take OPSEC very fucking seriously. Mm-hmm. And we tell people, hey, maybe don't post uh, where you live, this, that, and a third about yourself. Like even if you come out with your name, maybe don't yeah. post your fucking location uh, or like uh, landmarks that'll uh, identify where you live. Because you, people, a dedicated enough person can fucking pinpoint where you live based off just the landmarks alone. Mm-hmm. And but that's it's dangerous. so weird. I've spoken to other larger streamers and like they've, told me there are some people like I mean you look at someone like Desi who's literally had what like I don't even know if he literally had a thought well against him um but uh where a ton of people wanted to hurt him his address has been out there for a very long time no one's ever done it 
And so he'll always tell me, like, no one's going to actually, none of these people actually act on this shit, right? Um, but it's still, like, all it takes is one. All you it know? takes is one. That's the thing. Right? I mean, you know, no one's acted on it. All it takes is one dedicated ass crazy motherfucker. Yeah. And and next thing you know, you got you got anthrax in the mail, or you open the you open the door and a motherfucker trying to stab you or some shit, or you, whatever the case may be. And that is in and of itself just the potential of that is something that needs to be fucking dealt with. And to deal with that, um, you people need to be taught how to protect themselves online, among other things, like how to. Uh, temper themselves online, but I, if nothing else, I would say people need to know how to fucking protect themselves online. Oh yeah, I, Melanie in chat brought up the trans thing. Look at what happened at Keffels, like um, yeah, you know. But like, again, uh, it's not it's, it's not even so much that Keffels was trans; it's just that motivated crazy people wanted actually wanted blood. You yeah. know what I mean? It, it's like it's less. I mean, yeah, obviously it was motivated by hate towards trans people, mm -hmm. but yeah, it's it not. It, but yeah. you, but you get what I'm saying. It can happen to anyone. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? It's the people do act on. They just need to be motivated enough to do it. You know, mm -hmm. I mean, they, a prime example is how the Republican Party and right wing media have gone on for years, raging on about how you know you get an abortion, you, you, uh, Planned Parenthood is murdering babies and shit. So then there was that case. I think it was back in twenty sixteen or fifteen of the guy who called himself the warrior for the babies who rolled up on a Planned Parenthood and shot everybody, yeah. killed nine people, I believe. You know what I mean? All yeah, even though millions of people are hearing that same message. All it takes is one. Mm -hmm. Yep. And that's and like, that fear is what killed me for so long. Like that all it takes is one. And if you like calculate all like the weirdos or the crazies in your DMs as a public figure, um, and that's only going to increase as you get larger and larger. It's like, there's often a disincentive to keep growing um, because oh. it's scary. Oh, for sure. I, I, especially the case if you're a woman. That's fucking terrible. I do not envy uh, women online at all. I, good Lord. You know what I mean? Uh, the worst I've dealt with is motherfuckers calling me a coon or other fucking, you know, or uh, seeing me with my, I, I'm married to a white woman, be, you know, calling me things with regards to that. Or um, mm -hmm. because I'm a military veteran, uh, motherfuckers telling me to kill myself and shit. You know what I mean? I hope this, the thing is, I kind of just roll that with all That still sounds shit. really awful. That's oh, it's really bad. Yeah. I, I mean, it is bad for sure, but I roll with this shit. Motherfuckers say, hey, uh, how many uh, uh, how many kids did you kill in Iraq, huh? And I'm like, uh, I, I don't know. I wasn't counting. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? I, I just kind of roll that, throw that shit back at them. And then they'll, they're, 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 my, the usual reaction I get is like, how could you say that, sir? Motherfucker, you just said I killed children. Like, they, 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 of course I'm going to fucking throw this shit back in your face. Don't come at me with that. But you know what? The attitude that you have, that's that attitude is going to help you succeed. Like, um, that's a good attitude to have. Like, with me, I had a very bad attitude with it. Like, you know, an attitude that's definitely not the hell they want to have as a content creator where it's like, I just, I internalized everything. I became very self-critical. Um, uh, I don't slap back ever. I don't have, I didn't have fun with it. Um, and that's, uh, I cared way too much and like, you know, and I, and I didn't know what to do because I felt like if I didn't do that, I still wouldn't be me. And maybe the fact that people, maybe that's what people liked about me. They liked that I was self-critical and all that kind of stuff, but I took it to an extreme. Um, and, uh, yeah, it can be really bad with the stuff that you read online and and everything like that. Oh, that's why uh, so that's why like celebrities and public figures they be, they surround themselves with yes men and they become super narcissistic because it's like it's a survival mechanism. It's a, it's know, a survival deflect. mechanism. It's a coping mechanism to deflect from self criticism, to deflect from the naysayers and the endless fucking haters out there that will be there. But unfortunately, what they end up doing is blinding them from legitimate criticism. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. they, they they can't see any of it anymore. And again, now they're just surrounded by it. Now they're in a fucking hug box. You know what I mean? Yeah. And that's that's also unhealthy. You know yeah. what I mean? So mm -hmm. it's 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 a fine line. It's a fine balance. And and for me, I found it in that. And here's a here's a thing I do, and I tell people this all the fucking time. That uh, my secret is that uh, after I put out a tweet that is I I would say particularly controversial or some shit, I mute the tweet. I don't engage with everybody. Really? I don't. I, I muted every single, I mute all of my tweets, all of them. 
every single fucking time because I don't give a shit about engaging with everybody because this is because most people just want to fucking yell at want to talk at you either yell at you or talk at you no one ever wants to talk to you but on occasions when people do want to talk to me like they're actually trying to have a conversation to me they actually just DM me and then we have a conversation there like I have, I have plenty of people who just fucking uh uh, I have plenty of buddies who will reach out to me and be like, "Hey, man, what the fuck did you just say? What was that about?" And I'm like, "I'm gladly to talk to them in DMs because I'm you're not probably gonna that. have a you're probably gonna have a way better conversation with them in DMs. A okay. way better conversation because I'm not about to have a fucking 280 character back and forth about complex issues of this, that, and the third. Especially when we're clearly talking past each other. Fuck all that. I I, I used to do that. I used to be just as mad. I used to fucking I, I'll never forget." When I had an argue with a motherfucker online about a conversation, about a topic, I can't even fucking remember. I argued with this motherfucker back and forth for two goddamn days. And wow. in the same tweet thread, two fucking days. And when it was done, when I finally decided to just end it, I mm. sat there and realized, what the fuck am I doing? Yeah. Why, why am I arguing with a motherfucker uh, for two goddamn days? What am I doing yeah. with my life? <laughs> so, yeah, and so, Jay, you, you say I, why I'd be ignoring you on Twitter. I'm like, it's not that I want to be clear to everybody. It's not that I'm ignoring all of you, and but, I mean, literally I am. It's just I don't, I'm not, <laughs> even, even though there's some of you in there that says good things to me, I'd rather just not engage with any of it. I'd rather, I, I will say my, the Twitter for me is where I say my piece and then run away because I try to, and then if you, if you really want to talk to me, you can DM me. My DMs are open. But I am not engaging with every motherfucker. Like a recent tweet I just put out, I looked at I looked at it and it's muted, but I looked better. I saw 53 fucking replies to it. I was like, oh boy, I'm not go going in there. Not happening. Nope, not touching it. Oh my god, did you I don't know if you saw, but I made a tweet like last week and I just made like a joke that I thought was really funny. Um, because I'm one of those lame people that laughs at my own jokes. And nah, ain't no um, shame in that. And, and uh I got the most intense, I think it got retweeted in like the extreme lefty sphere. And they took it completely seriously. And I just got like put on like every fucking extreme lefty hate list. Like crazy. Oh, um, yeah. Yeah. And I'm still getting quote tweeted to this day. And I'm so confused by it. Like, because uh, I, I, to me, it was so obviously a joke. But yeah, people get crazy on well, what is now X. Oh yeah, no, it's people uh, that just again, like I said, people want to be mad. Uh, you say a thing, um, even if you're clearly joking. Uh, no, it doesn't matter if you're joking. You, how dare you? How dare you, madam? How could you say that? That that was that's so wrong. And now I'm going. Now me and everybody in this sphere is going to fucking come down on you because we have nothing else better to do with our lives. And for me, I'm just like, nope, 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 not doing it. I'm I'm not even in, I'm not even entertaining it. They can yell at themselves for all because that's what they're effectively doing with my muted tweets. They're yelling at themselves. Mm -hmm. they, they can, and, and if they want to strut around being like, oh, no reply, huh? They, he must not have anything to say. No motherfuckers, because I've moved on with my life. I have no the problem is I have, I have like an abusive, I have like an abusive relationship with it where it's like I like some of their thoughts as I like the de like the the discussions that sometimes come out of it. I've made friends on Twitter, which is crazy. Like some of my closest friends I met on Twitter. Um and so like I I've had some really cool discussions. So I'm always like, you know, it's almost you know like if someone's like a drug addict and they're always like searching for like that perfect high. Like I'm yeah. I'm kind of like that. Like when I'm like arguing or debating, I'm always searching for that really fun, interesting discussion that's gonna, oh, sure. you know, yeah, that's gonna make my feed my brain. Right. It's, That's very it rare, is, but it does happen. It's cause it's cathartic for sure to go back and forth with somebody in a if in what you you like if you're if it's entertaining you like you're actually enjoying the conversation. So mm -hmm. even if you're not enjoying it again, it, 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 this catharsis in angrily going back and forth with somebody dunking on them, insulting them back and forth. There 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 is something that to be gained from it. It's just knowing your fucking limits, knowing when to stop. Yeah. For me, I learned. What I realized and what I tell people, I try to tell other content creators, I try to tell everybody this, fucking do not fight with the internet. You will lose because there's more of them than there are you and they will keep going. Yeah. Yeah, that is that is definitely true. They they, they, they won't stop. They will they will wear you down. I promise you. I uh, I used to debate. I don't know how much you know about my past, but I uh, I used to debate Nazis. That's like initially 
before I was a streamer, I got kind of known in like the discord debate world. Um, mm -hmm. and, uh, and I loved doing that initially because for me, like as a, I remember the first time I met a Holocaust denier, like a real life, I'd only heard about them. I only read about them. And I was like excited. I was like, I was like, hello, you know, Joe, Joe, the Holocaust denier. Okay. Lovely to meet you. Like I was, it was like meeting, um, a, like a character in a comic book for the first time in real life. And I was just so excited to hear like, why do you feel this way? Like, what are your arguments? And like, you know, I'm sure I can dispel all this with facts and logic. Right. And I did that for like two years, nonstop, like way mm -hmm. more than I did school. <laughs> and, I, uh, oh, go ahead, go ahead. and I got like, and I went, and before that I was very pro free speech. Um, I resented the fact that I'd never met a Holocaust denier in Canada um, because it's later, it's literally illegal. And after that experience of two weeks, I was like, oh, sorry, of two weeks, of two years, I was like, yeah, makes sense why it's illegal. <laughs> right. Makes because I realized, well. yeah, I got really blackpilled. Like there were a few good conversations. Right. But nine times out of 10, they didn't genuinely believe in what they were saying. They were just really hateful people. Oh, and, yeah. Um, and I, and here I was thinking, and I think like a fr free speech advocates, people like Wick, right? They almost project, this is just my theory. They're projecting themselves onto the rest of humanity that they think that because Wick is like this honest interlocutor, right? And he's going to be convinced with a good argument. He's going to be convinced with, um, and he's on average going to, you know, he's going to lean towards a, an area that because of evidence and, um, and whatever convinced him, uh, he thinks that everyone else is like that. But the truth is a lot of people aren't. And yeah. people with very extremist ideas, a lot of times, not always, right? But a lot of times they genuinely don't believe in those ideas. Um, some extreme extreme leftists genuinely believe that it is um, that it is ethically justifiable to lie about facts, right? To lie about facts for the sake of getting a revolution, right? Yeah. Um, for the no, for uh, greater good, right? Because they're util utilitarians. Yeah. Um, and Nazis participate, not saying that those are on the same level, right? But like Nazis use often the same, the same, tr the same, the same tricks. Yeah. Mm -hmm. No. And on that note, I, I have a different theory is, mm -hmm. and for me, it's that it's for the same reason uh, the, the why I don't envy anybody responsible for content moderation and such. Right. Yeah. It's a fuck. It's a fucking nightmare uh, because at the end of the day, somebody's going to be pissed off at you, right? If you actually moderate content, if you actually censor people, if you actually exile the bad guy, the, the, the people you don't want in your audience or you don't want on this platform or you don't want in your town or whatever the fuck may be, um, you these people aren't going to like you. Somebody's not going mm -hmm. to somebody's not going to be happy by the fucking end of this. And with a lot of free speech absolutists, what I find is underlying it all is a uh, is two things a desire to be liked by all and a desire to not be the bad guy, right? They don't want mm -hmm. to be the one to have to pull the trigger. They don't want yep. that responsibility and everything else is just, everything else just flows outward from that, right? They want to be liked, so they don't want to be the one, they, but unfortunately you try to play both sides and now both sides mm -hmm. fucking hate you. You know what and I mean? You, it's so you interesting can't. that you bring that up. It's so yeah. interesting that you bring that up because it's like, it's it's totally understandable that people feel that way if someone um you know when it comes to like because when it comes to deciding making the decision it's logical to be afraid of making that decision of pulling the trigger because what if you pull the trigger on the wrong person um yep. what if who do we decide to get to pull the trigger i think the best argument against controlling free speech is like what i'm afraid of the consequences of it um, yeah. so it's like, yeah, I'm afraid of the consequences of dangerous speech, but I'm more afraid of like, who gets to control what is that's dangerous what they, speech. That's because they themselves are afraid of that power, uh, the, the, of, of not just in, a, in other people's hands, but in their own hands. They, and it's a legitimate fear. I and it's that's a fear. Legitimate. That's what I, that's what I want to be clear about when I say that is that there's nothing wrong with that, with the, with those, with those mindsets, particularly this, mm -hmm. I don't see any issue with it at all. I, it's just me, I'm fundamentally more than willing to be the bad guy, to be uh, hated by whoever I tell to fuck off uh, or mute or this, that, and the third. I am perfectly fine with pulling the trigger. You know what I mean? Are you, I, not, are you not worried about what if you pull the trigger on the wrong thing? What if that's you suppress? 
uh, cost, an idea that's actually very important. Cost benefit analysis is the way I see it. It's just um, the risk of pulling the trigger on the wrong person or idea uh, it's, it does not outweigh the danger of the worst of what we know to be, or at least are uh, confident in saying are the worst fucking ideas or people. Uh, I, I'm willing to take that chance. I'm willing to own that. If I get it wrong, that's the thing. If I get it wrong, I will fully accept the consequences or whatever the fuck comes my way. The problem with a lot of these people is they are not willing. They don't want the consequences of getting it wrong, right? People, every, so many people want to get it right all the time, always, and they're afraid of getting it wrong. And how this manifests in a lot of ways, not just with free speech, is uh, fuck in the military, right? Uh, nobody wants the fingers pointed at them as the one who fucked up, mm -hmm. right? So yeah. we have uh, a fuck ton of, I would say, middlemen between everything and it's just um, everyone wants to kick the can down the road and basically when shit goes south they want to say oh it wasn't me it was that guy and that guy goes yeah. say well it wasn't me it was that guy because no one wants to fucking own when shit goes south no one nobody wants to be that guy so that's what that is is fear of that you know what i mean yeah. it is no one wants to be the one when she, but me no Fuck that. If I fuck up, if I make the wrong call, bring it the fuck on. I'm whether if I say something stupid or do something stupid, bring it the fuck on. I don't know. Maybe it's because I'm used to consequences in my life. I don't know. I'm used to that. I'm used to people yelling at me or, or fucking coming down on me or so because I fucked up in some way, shape, or form. I'm so comfortable me, with that. Ideologically, I'm coincidentally not an idealistic person. So I tend to on average, like my politics and my philosophies and stuff, they tend I tend to lean towards the least bad decision rather than what I consider the right decision. Because it's very yeah. it's very rare that I see like very firmly this is the right this is the right policy. You know? Yeah. Like oh, this is the right way. Continue, before okay. you continue, I, I want to say to everybody in the audience, I we will address questions towards the end. Because I've seen questions and comments and such. I want. I don't want to keep derailing the conversation to address them. So, at the end, we'll go back through the comments, address comments and and questions and shit. All right, just give y'all a heads up on that. I should have said at the beginning. My bad. I forgot what I was saying. Uh, no, but, carry on. You were saying that you're less. You're not. You're less idealistic and such. Oh yeah, yeah. So I tend to, on average, like a lot of like where I lean tends to be on average like the what I consider the least bad decision. You know, right? Um, and so when it comes to something like that, that's that's where I lean. It's one of the reasons why I'm pro death penalty, um, but I'm also, you know, pro like pro hate speech laws, um, and you know, and not not a free speech absolutist. Uh, because even though like I am very aware that there are dangers like that, like it's very possible that, um, you know, that you potentially might call something hate speech that's actually very important for society. Um, and, uh, you know, as we have in the past, right, where you, we, we had hate speech laws against the king um, and that was problematic. <laughs> um, so what happens like or maybe a certain religion is dangerous or like has, a, you know, dangerous ideals or is doing something really bad and maybe it does deserve to be criticized and we're not allowing it to be criticized. Like I can I can see that I can see the negative consequences of it. Um, but to me, like it's like if that becomes a large problem, I would rather deal with that when it happens because that's just a uh, potential fear and i'm the larger problem especially right now to me is the opposite um which is you know really dangerous information um that's full of lies that is just being spread um around that has severe consequences um and especially has severe consequences if you're a minority um or honestly if you're anyone, it, if you're, if you're the anyone, lies I'll, that get spread. Yeah, honestly, like yeah, because I, I was thinking just the other day, there's tons of lies that get spread about men. So yeah, um, the so like there's such little um, stops on that that um, I would much rather um, have consequences and put things into place, and maybe we can add laws the way if you have the something like the death penalty, right? In theory, you will have like a court of justice that person will have a lawyer right they'll have the ability to appeal they've got a constitution like they've got like rights you know like they you don't just they get, they yeah, get fair process. Not just, yeah 
yeah, we're not just um we're not we're not just like King Joffreying the shit, right? Like in yeah, Game of nah. Thrones. So oh, yeah. as tempting as that is sometimes. But um so so you just you are you import put important constitutional like reforms to reduce the chances of something really bad happening, but there's no way that you can always reduce it. But to me, like especially if you look at statistics and stuff, and this will vary based on different situations. But the reason why I'm, I'm convinced with death penalty stuff um, uh, is because the danger is much more on the other side. Like the majority of rapists get away with it. The majority of murderers get away with it. The majority of people who do it's it's victims that are on average the ones getting left out to dry not yeah. um yeah that's big like and so if that's largely the problem then to me like i would lean more towards being more harsher um because basically uh, the risk of uh, the, the is mm -hmm. the actual problem like you're basically saying is that you know more often than not and this is and this is statistically provable is that yeah. the victims are you know left with left with no recourse basically the, the person will get away with it more often than not so yeah. that being a problem, in, in in essence, justifies when we do use it effectively because the because the risk of getting it wrong uh, is significantly less than the current outcome where the person mm -hmm. walk the the bad guys walk more often than not, and had, yeah. which has been the case for and, for far and they ever. they go and hurt other people, usually people yeah. that are underprivileged and like and have tons of exes against them. Um, yeah. So. That shit drives me up the wall. I actually mm -hmm. like, I it's been a wild experience. I recently moved to um, to a big city, mm -hmm. and uh, big cities are often very left leaning in a lot of ways. Um, and it's been kind of wild for me. And it's a big reason why I like the city, right? Because I I love being around weirdos. I love being around like unique shit, um, people who dress wild ways and and do music wild ways and just like you know, all that kind of artsy shit. And, um, but it's, it's kind of weird to me how often I'll see like lefty stuff, um, like in the city kind of go against a lot of their own values, um, or like the sacrifices they'll make, um, make no sense to me. Um, for example, uh, yeah, I was going to ask for an example. Oh yeah. Um, so for example, like with, um, homelessness uh, is a good, good example. So like my opinion on and a lot of big cities have big issues with homelessness right now, especially after the pandemic. Yeah. And, um, and my, my attitude with that is I'm very economically left. Um, so I would spend loads of money. I would spend a lot of my taxes putting those people either in some kind of housing situation, improving the, improving the shelter system, things like that. But I also would be really right wing, more right wing and strict on allowing them on the street. Right. And allowing them yeah. to take up parks um, uh, or even things like sharing like the um, the public injection sites, like things like that. Um, yeah. So uh, and like and so but here the majority that's a really weird opinion here. Right. No, the majority of people course. lean one way or the other. Right. Like they're either fuck the homeless. Right. Or the homeless are great. We need to prop them up as like, you know, like, you know, and so let them do whatever the fuck they want. <laughs> So let's go oh. back a bit, right? Um, oh, sorry. Yeah. No, no, you're good. You're good. Let's go back a bit because you said a lot. So I just want to address a few, address a few things, right? First, okay. with regards to the death penalty, is uh, I uh, with regards to the death penalty, I talked to counterpoints about this, mm -hmm. and that in in an ideal fucking world, if we got you dead to rights, you know what I mean? There's no fucking. It's beyond reasonable doubt. We got you dead to rights, guilty of X fucking heinous goddamn crime. Yeah. Uh, fuck, uh, like, uh, 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 with due process, of course, being uh, implied after the fact, I just put a bullet in you and be done with you. And that's a, that, but again, that's in an ideal world. Unfortunately, we don't mm -hmm. live in that where um, the, as it stands, um, it's, very hard to other than like cases of like a mass shooting where we caught the shooter alive more yeah. often than not in every other case it's there's still reason to be doubt of reason to doubt whether or not somebody's mm -hmm. guilty of se or so and so crime it's why a lot of people walk unfortunately but if there if there's any reasonable doubt at all that's that that's where the problem lies right because you don't want to 
to take a life and get it wrong, right? When I say I'm willing to pull the trigger on a lot of things, it's regards to more abstract things like speech and platforming such. When it comes to the death penalty, if there's any reason to doubt whether or not someone the fucking committed the crime, I'm not pulling the trigger. You know what I mean? Because once I kill you, that's it. There's no bringing you back. There's no oopsie. <laughs> Sorry, it turns out you weren't guilty of it. Oh, he's dead. You know what I mean? There's no coming back from that. So it's hard that that's why even in the, again, in an ideal world, we had the means to being able to get people dead to rights on shit and uh, mm -hmm. in ever in all, any and all cases, that'd be fucking great. And yes, I would be all for, you know, pulling the trigger on them, but we don't live in that world. We do not, even with the technology that we have, it is still, there are still too many, too much room for error to be able to do that. Um, that's why I can't, so I both do and don't support the death penalty in that regard. Mm. You know what I mean? Yeah. No, I get it. I think that's the best argument against the death penalty. It's not that it's not ethically, you know, deserving, right? It's just that yeah. what if what if you're wrong, right? What like if that, you're wrong? That, that to me is like, yeah, that's that's always the, that's the biggest thing. That's yeah. the biggest thing. And then, then, then there's the, but the people who argue that, oh, it'd be a deterrent against crime. You know, I say, you know what's a deterrent against crime? You know what I mean? It's actually fucking uh, uh, holding. There's a lot of deterrence, just to be clear. It's not just one thing. Yeah. But yeah, one one is accountability. Two is uh, f dealing with the particular factors that led to someone committing the crime, right? Fucking just as an example, the, yeah, people like to point to a poor person stealing likely because they're hungry, thirsty, this, that, and the fuck. They need medicine, yada, yada, yada. It's stuff like that. So the solution is obvious. Make it so they're not desperate anymore. But in the cases of uh, violent crime where the person just decided you know, is, you know, like, like say domestic violence, you know, they decide to beat their oh, yeah. kid, wife, whatever the case may be. Um, the, the deterrent from that is, uh, at least in my eyes, is... Uh, is going to be like parole and shit, right? Where it's mm -hmm. like now we're now we're watching. Not only are we on parole, but I would expand the type of sex offender list to have, to include um, violent criminals as well, right? Not non-violent criminals, but I mean violent criminals. So now we know because just like with the sex offender list, like when my wife recently looked up fucking uh, on this app we have, you see the sex offenders live nearby. We know who we know. Who they are, and we know what sex offenses. We don't have that in Canada. All. We don't have rights to that in Canada. Oh, we do in America. I don't know why y'all don't have that jealous. in Canada. That's fucked. Yeah, yeah, it's because no, it's America... in Canada we value uh, sex offenders and their rights. American that is people. fucking insane. No, fuck that. No, you should. You you ha as a citizen should not be should not unwittingly bear the burden of living near some living next to someone who is uh, likely to reoffend. For a, a the a heinous crime that they've committed, you know what mm -hmm. I mean. The, the the notion that you should just, you know, not know who you're living with is fucked. And oh God, yeah, they're allowed to change their names and everything too. Like they're oh they're that's that is, that is that that's fucked. No fuck that. I would have a registry for uh all kinds of crime, and we know we'd all know. You should, I'm not, you should know who you're dealing with. I'm not convinced by deterrence arguments a lot. Right. Um, uh, in general, it's rarely the reason why I'm motivated if I do end up harsh on crime on an ideological issue. Um, the the deterrence thing, especially like I, all the signs that I've read is that nine times out of 10, the majority of of whether or not you're going to be a violent criminal is decided by three years old. Like, um, oh, yeah, it, for sure. Yeah. Like it's your, it's your first few years of life. Right. Um, and that's like that's the primary thing. And like so it's like I, I doubt that three year olds is being like, well, they really increase their being really harsh on crime now in Missouri. And um, I'm really going to reduce my chances now of, of committing. No, no, no. Like that's yeah, that's definitely not. I'm no, definitely. And, oh, wait, oh, wait. Sorry. And, um, and additionally, um, if you look at like. You know, I got really into crime statistics with moving to the city because when I was moving to the city, everyone was like, oh, my God, like as a woman, so dangerous and all this kind of stuff. So I got really into um, researching this stuff and like crimes instead in cities are actually incredibly low compared to suburbs um, and other sides. But people think it's really, really high uh, statistically, but it's not. Yeah. And one of the reasons for that is. Um, even though you're around probably weirder people and more problematic people, it's like the thing that keeps someone from committing a crime is not the level of punishment, but it's just the fear of getting caught at all. 
So yeah. whether or not someone's going to get a slap on the wrist and well, that's, be in prison that's what for was... 10 yeah, weeks or for 10 years, right? It doesn't make a huge difference. They just don't want to get caught. Yeah, that, 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 that's that's what I was the, what I was saying basically is that mm-hmm. with regards to a, a reg- expanding our sex offender registry to just a registry for all crimes, you are being monitored, right? Like motherfucking yeah. law enforcement knows that everybody has an eye on you now. Now people are aware of who's around them; they know to watch out for them. But not just that, um, you, you got so you got the regular civilians got eyes on you because oh shit, that person's on this registry for so and so crime. I better watch out for them. But on top of that, law enforcement's also got their eyes on you because they know you, they don't want you to reoffend. So they they keep you basically got eyes on you everywhere. You don't need cameras everywhere, so to speak. You need people in tandem with law enforcement knowing who the fuck we're dealing with and knowing where they are and knowing and knowing knowing what they're doing. You know what I mean? Knowing what they're guilty of, so we know not to fucking um. Uh, let this and say, for example, if the motherfucker's a pedophile guilty of you know child sex related crimes, we know not to let this motherfucker anywhere near a school. And of course, we have you know uh stuff that are already in place where they put like, hey, we got a restraining order, you know, you, the court order mm-hmm. restraining order saying you're not allowed, you sir, are not allowed within 500 yards of a fucking school and shit. But it would go even further that now because they can still violate that, but it helps yeah. when people when people know that this person they can look up and say, hey. This person isn't allowed anywhere near school. So what the fuck is he doing here right now? Type of deal. Because the average person, without any without any foreknowledge, are just going to be okay with that. And a yeah. pro, and a prime example I have of this, and I'm sorry for interrupting. Just to give you a okay, short story I didn't told before. I say it again. Right back when I was in the military, uh, I worked with this guy, and y'all can look this up. Uh, likely, I'm pretty sure. Uh, his name was Corporal Boss, B-A-A-S. When I worked, he was on restriction, which meant he was in trouble for something. The weird thing was nobody knew what he was in trouble for. I sure as fuck didn't know. But everybody just kind of assumed that it was just, you know, some minor shit. And he was, because you know, people get in trouble for minor shit all the time in the military. So, no, it was no big deal. We he, we hung around this guy casually, comfortably, laughed and joked with this motherfucker, talked to him. I, I would have considered the guy my friend. Until one day, the commanding officer of the unit brought everybody back to the, for the, the, the squad bay and told us what he was like about his conviction, what he was guilty of. He was guilty mm. of sexually assaulting his two year old son and recording himself. Oh, doing my it. God. If any of us had known that beforehand. That he was even oh accused God. of doing that. Do you think we would have been around that motherfucker? Yeah. Do you think we people would have showed him pictures of their kids? Do you think they would have had been buddy buddy or friendly with this motherfucker? We would have right no, we would have rightfully fucking ostracized him or stayed the fuck away from him. Mm-hmm. But because we did not know, we unwittingly bore the burden of a fucking uh, child sex of a uh, 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 child rapist right there. Right in front of us, smiling in our fucking faces. You know what I mean? And that's what I mean when I call when I was referred to a registry of like when they're actually convicted, not necessarily accused, because you know, I don't wanna I don't know I don't want fucking vigilantes, but like when they're convicted of this certain thing, we should all fucking know about it. Yeah. And I guarantee I they... everyone's behaviors would change accordingly. Go ahead. Yeah, it, in in Canada, I don't believe in this, but the, the argument against it, I'll try not to. I'll, tr- I'll try to be a good devil's advocate um, is that, uh, you know, whether or not when someone's, you know, put on a sex registry, there's a sex registry for all sex offenses. So it can be something from a minor offense of like, I don't know, someone slapping someone's ass at a party when they're drunk um, uh, versus, you know, a situation like what you described, right, which is like, and they all just get put on a list together um, and it can, you know, and you know, and then there's a danger of vigilantes. That person has rights to privacy. Um, yeah. Well, and, that, that, uh, in, you know, oh, or like, if especially if they're on there for life. Um, and they, and also one of the biggest arguments and probably one of the better ones is that it keeps them in a cycle of criminal activity, right? Because like, they're not likely to get hired again. They're not likely to um, be able to build their life again and get out of that mode. Um, but to be honest, there, I, I have an attitude with society that I think some people are just lost causes. <laughs> So, oh no, um, I, I share, I share yeah. that sentiment. That guy, Corporal Boss, I wouldn't give a fuck if he was homeless for the rest of his life because no one would hire him. Yeah. Fuck him. He can die. Yeah. He can die under a bridge for all I care. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. But the, with regards to the sex registry, we do have 
um, uh, the like with, with regards to the registry that my wife looked up through the app, it do, it does break down, but it doesn't just say registered sex offender. It breaks down specific. Yeah, it breaks down the what, specific of what they did. Yeah, of what they did. It like you know what I mean. So that's what it's supposed to be, right? I know they. I know that they are. That a lot of there are also that, other arguments. There are historical arguments um, that uh, that make sense historically, but I don't know if they. But I I understand why people are doubtful, right? Because we used to consider a lot of other types of people sex offenders, right? Like we used to consider um, gay people sex uh, any, yeah. any yeah any gay person a sex offender. Um, uh, we used to consider anyone engaging in anal sex at all like a sex offender. So um, I mean, it's still considered illegal in some places. So like it's like maybe and a lot of people got killed as a consequence of that so you know yeah. you should well, be very uh, careful when it comes to releasing public information i guess that's the oh no, oh no of course in which case i would hope that we at least push for a society that understand has a mutual understanding of what is and isn't the fucking sex crime right mm -hmm. to, to put consensual gay sex anal sex between two, two gay people or fucking two straight people i don't give a shit whatever they're is n not even remotely in the same realm as a child sex as a child rapist. You know what I mean? I'd like to think mm -hmm. we could get to that point, but obviously there are still people who are would argue that you know well, we should. What's unfortunate those... is they argue that shit like yeah. you know pedos will literally argue that what they're doing is not rape and all that yeah thing, right? no 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 fuck that we we I think I'd like to think in we in the court of pu pu public opinion we could say no that that is and fuck you for saying it isn't you're not gonna you're not gonna yeah. gaslight us into convince you into believing that that's not what it is but yeah. all that being said because this this got dark let's just Sorry. Little, let's, no no you're <laughs> good conversations with me tend to go that way god damn hey, ten, they, 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 hey I am no stranger to it myself but <laughs> um as the host, I have to be aware when I'm like, okay, we're just getting dark, so let's have a little fun. Let's let's let's, <laughs> let's, let's have a little tonal whiplash. At, okay, at, let's, at, at, let's do it. Fucking, what did like? What did you say you you you're into right now? Like, it's something that you enjoy. Yeah, you know, that that's that you're into right now. What? Because I'm sure people who've missed you and haven't seen you forever would love to know like what you like. Um. I, I guess like the big thing for me is I've rediscovered my passion and my motivation for music. So okay. that's become my biggest, my biggest focus on average. I am practicing and playing the, ma the majority of my, of my day is dedicated to that um, as well what, as school. But you know, what instrument? I play guitar. Uh, fucking, everybody fucking yeah, I play, guitar. I play other instruments badly. Right. You know, no, no, I, I, I'm I have just, a violin. Yeah. But, I'm yeah, just but giving I'm you shit. Good. I'm just, I'm just <laughs> giving you shit. No, I think that's cool. I, I need to get into learning how to play an instrument at some point. Uh, at, in some yeah, well, point, I in my teach life. lessons for sixty dollars an hour. <laughs> well, I, hey, if I had sixty dollars an hour money, I would, <laughs> I, I would gladly hire you. But I'm a broke bitch, so yeah, uh, we'll cross that bridge when we come to it. <laughs> right now, no, I, I, my, my, what I'm better at right now is, is boxing. You know, punching people. I am. That's I would enjoy that too. I would enjoy that too. I'm not gonna lie. I, I highly recommend it. It's really fun. Once you get used to getting punched in the face or getting punched at all, it's it's no longer scary. It's just fun. Do you think me as a five foot two woman could actually punch someone and hurt someone? Like uh, absolutely. Abs I boxed um some women your your height and size and then your weight and all that jazz. And uh the, that chick was trying to take my fucking head off. You're like, God damn, was she swinging hard? And when she landed the hits, I was like, ah, fuck, damn. Cool. It's just a matter yeah. of technique, right? Obviously, muscle matters, but if you got the right technique, even someone your size can knock a big, a big motherfucker like me down. My tactic when I was in high school, I was briefly, play, I briefly played rugby. So, mm -hmm. like, my plan was always that whenever, because I'm a really like weak person, like, literally, the only muscles I have in my body are like for playing guitar. <laughs> And uh, so my plan was always like, if someone comes at me, like I'm going to like get down almost like, like I'm going to crouch and I'm going to grab them by their thighs and do a rugby tackle. There you go. That's the only way that I have any strength to do anything. Because that's most of the power is in your legs. And you, you, mm -hmm. you, when you crouch down and spring forward while, you know, disrupting their fucking balance. Yeah. You can take a motherfucker, no matter how big or small you are, you can take yeah. anybody down with that, with the proper technique, because again, our legs are extremely fucking powerful. You know what I mean? Yeah. And you, when you bend, when you crouch, when you, you know, give, 
bend them fucking knees and put yeah and push off your fucking toes, you can just you can take a motherfucker down. Yeah. Yeah, uh, I saw someone get kicked to shit on the subway the other day, and that was ooh. Like little. So yeah, no, sure. no. The kick, the kicks ain't no fucking joke. If you land one, I wouldn't recommend. That's another thing I would say is never try to kick a motherfucker in a fight unless you know you can land that shit. Yeah. Because you, the second you throw your leg up, you you risk someone disrupting your fucking already non-existent balance and mm -hmm. fucking your world up and taking you to the ground. That's why yeah. I stick. That's why I stick to punching. Uh, I mean, because in in boxing, I, I don't fuck with MMA and shit. Uh, because I, I ain't trying to be taken to the ground. It, it, for me, well, what's up? See, if we lived close, I would trade music lessons for for you know for boxing lessons. I right. now that would be a, that would be a fair trade, absolutely. <laughs> Fucking boxing sets what? a lot of fun. It's a sport you, I, I respect it. One second, you said you're going upstairs. Oh my god! All right, yeah, no, uh, boxing is a very fun profession. And on that note, I'm going to keep talking, but I'm going to move upstairs while I talk because my wife That's is fun. now home a lot earlier than I thought she'd be, and, and, her, and her friend. And I'm in the living room because I like letting my cat lay on my lap while I do this. Um, but yeah, no, I'm going to move up. I'm going to move while I talk. So to anybody watching this. My cameras are probably about to get a little weird, so stand by. <laughs> but uh, as I was saying, so you say, yeah, I I would highly recommend you get into boxing if for no other reason than it's just it's fun for one, and two, it does feel fucking good to punch somebody. It feels yes, fan, it imagine. feels it, it feels fan. It is extremely cathartic punching a pop box, a punching bag, but it's even more so when you're like going toe to toe with somebody and um, like you actually oh, land a hit. Oh God! It, 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 I will say one thing though is that uh, what a lot of people like imagine themselves being able to kick somebody's ass if they you know hit a bag enough or whatnot. But I promise y'all, everyone watching, to you especially, to you of course too, is that um, it is a lot harder to hit a motherfucker who's moving than you say. <laughs> Way yeah. harder. See, I think I'd be good at that, right? Because I play video games, so you know, like I have good hand-eye coordination. <laughs> I can project. I mean, hand, -eye, That's the hand eye coordination is all well and good, but when you're in the heat of the moment, oh yeah, uh, when like adrenaline's pumping, yeah. adrenaline's pumping, it fucks with your fucking ability to um, coordinate, to uh, react. You, you basically it starts coming down to pure instinct, right? You to your yeah. just raw ability to react because, like again, adrenaline fucks with you, uh, fucks up your mind, kind of makes your mind go blank. Um. And uh, what's the other one? Is that when you're physically exhausted, like when you're fucking tired, whoo, good luck. Yeah, I uh, I totally understand. I actually, I was walking, um, I was grabbing a bagel the other day, and as I'm about to cross the street, cross the street in front of a dollar store, I just see these, I just see like this, someone with a pool noodle getting whacked, like, like it was just whacking someone with a pool noodle, like this big, massive pit pool, I don't know if you know what those are, like. No, they no, get no, called no. different things, different countries. Yeah, this massive thing, like in the middle of downtown in the city. I was like, "What the fuck, right?" Um, and I was like, "Why are these?" And I just figured maybe it's like some teenage hooligans or something, like fighting outside of a dollar store with pool noodle. I get closer, and then I hear screaming, and it's actually this woman who's whacking this guy with a pool noodle because the guy's attacking her. And she had in Canada, there's you, you're not allowed to have anything for defense. You can't have a knife. You can't have pepper spray, like. You know, you can't do anything for defense, right? But no one said anything about a pool noodle. So um, say anything about a pool noodle, hell yeah. Yeah. So she's like whacking the pool noodle as he's screaming at her. It was wild. Um, eventually he gets like pulled off by someone else, and then he comes like running straight at me and he stops right in front of me. And I just did what everyone does in the city when you see a crazy person. Sorry, I mean neurodivergent, okay. And um, um uh, that I, you I, just I you act you act like they don't exist, right? Like, you're just like, mm -hmm. no, they're not existing right now. So I'm just focusing on my music and he just looks at me, screams in my face and just walks away. Because I was like, I didn't have a pool noodle. Yeah. Well, no. would it be nah. useful if I, if I knew how to punch? It would have been new. You would have been useful, in which case, please take some lessons. Anyway, if you ever get the chance, I highly recommend them. Yeah. For sure. Yeah, that, would, that would be cool. 
on that note, with regards to, I've heard the talk with regards to it's ableist to call someone fucking crazy and shit. And this is one of those things where I'm just y'all just going to be mad at me. I don't care. I'm still calling people crazy. Like, and I and I have no logical basis for it other than just get the fuck over it. I, I, like, police somebody else's language. You ain't policing mine. That's that. that I'm going mm. to call someone. I'm going to keep calling a crazy person crazy. I uh, the there's a big debate right now with like. Um, people call, you're not supposed to say homeless anymore, you're supposed to say unhoused. I, when I worked for Habitat for Humanity, they said the same thing to me. I was like, yeah. what the fuck? I, was, I asked them, like, what the fuck are y'all talking about? It's because the argument, I understand the argument is that, like, they still do have a home, right? Like, sometimes, especially sometimes them have really nice tents, you know, like, mm -hmm. um, or, or, like, a good, like, setup, so it's, like, it's kind of classist and shitty to say that just because it's not a house, it's not a home. Um, you know, so you say unhoused, right? The, I think the term homeless in general, I'm, I'm all for language change and I, policing people's language, I feel like is a bad way to, um, change language, but I'm, I'm totally fine with language change in, in general. It, I, um, yeah. In general, I get it. I yeah. do. Uh, and I, and I, and to be clear, I don't have f solid arguments out, outside of just, it's just vibes, bro. Like I, I, I just don't care. I, you know what I mean? And that's all that's all that matters to me. So that you know what I mean. Well, that's the core of it, right? Like it's just like if you know what someone means, if you know that someone's not being disparaging, right? And they're not um really shitting on someone or like something like that. Like, or if someone is, if I'm gonna say something really offensive about the homeless and I say the word unhoused, if I say something like the unhoused are awful, blah, 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 like they're pathetic, you know, who cares about them? Just because I said the right term, does that make it what I said okay? Like if it comes from a bad place and the same thing works the opposite. So I wish people in general would be a little more focused on the intent behind the word. Um, yeah, intent but, matters yeah. More, more, more than anything, I would say. But unfortunately, you know, everyone just blurred, just said, just a treat, not everyone, but people in these particular circles tend to just ignore intent for some reason. And I just, intent has, a, a, a intent in tone conveys way more than what you than just the word itself you know what i mean like shit uh an example is if i say oh man what's up dumbass the intent and tone conveys that i'm it's friendly it's a bar it's a friendly bar between uh, someone mm -hmm. you are comfortable with versus well what's up dumbass uh, it, which clearly conveys, oh, I'm not, this is not a uh, friendly bar. This is not a mutually fucking um, happy relationship here. I'm mad at this person. I'm calling and I am disparaging them. People just the, seem to ignore intent and tone in these conversations about language change that because they try to uh, create a language that is, um, gets the, that still gets the say gets the point across but is stripped of the possibility of uh being misinterpreted or or, or, or such you know and i'm and i'm just like no i mean this is why i personally hate texting because texting doesn't convey tone at all mm -hmm. really you know what i mean that's why i just or why people always add lol in their sentences and shit you know because they're trying to convey a tone though it's just like don't take what i'm saying like completely dry you know what i mean yeah, yeah, type of deal. So, nah, fuck all that. I'm just like, we. I understand intent and tone, and I know you don't mean any harm when you say the thing you say. Like, for an example, you said retard earlier. I hate that word. Not me, not me personally. I, I actually, I hate that word too. I actually never say that word. My, yeah, my twin brother uh, was called that because he's a mildly autistic. Mm -hmm. And so, I, although I am perfectly fine with people saying it in general, if he's around, if you say that word, I'm jumping down your fucking throat, right? Yeah, I, then yeah. If he's around, I you can't say that word. But when he's not around, I don't give a shit because it doesn't bother me. Mm -hmm. All right, it's interesting. That word's an interesting thing. Like uh, my friend group, like we're still we all have very different opinions on whether or not that word is a slur or like okay to be used. Um, and I actually, I've, I've, I hate that word. I always have hated that word. Um, and when I use it, it's very sparingly. Like. Um, the, uh, but like, it, I don't know, the majority of people still are, are chill with it, but it's, it's interesting to see like, um, the different ways that we handle language and the different ways that we, um, that we regard certain words. Um, there are some words that will always offend me, like no matter what, 
Um, yeah. Even uh, a lot of a lot of times when people come become very good friends with me, they'll um, I don't they'll uh, I'm Jewish, right? So they'll they'll say the the Kessler to me, which uh, rhymes with bike. Ah, uh, yeah, I know, um, I know the one. And and when they become very good friends with me, they'll say that, right? Um, and I think that they think that that's okay because um, I probably played my own part in it um, because I have a very dark and edgy sense of humor and. I'm okay with Holocaust jokes when you're really good friends with me. And for some reason, that word just, I really don't want to hear it. I don't want to be called it. I don't want to be referred to it. Like, I don't want it to be even said. Um, and uh, it was the uh, way I was raised. And just grosses me out. Uh, I'm much the same way with the N word, with the A. Mm -hmm. You know, you know yeah. nigga, I, I, I don't say yeah. it. I don't, I, I yeah. don't, and I tell people don't, if you call me that, sure, whatever, but I'm never going to say it. I prefer yeah. you don't call me that. I, I I prefer no one ever use it. Oh, everybody, period. Yeah. But I obviously I'm not gonna police everybody. I don't I don't care enough to even try. Fucking I just know I will never say it, type of deal. But uh um, yeah, there's, there's just no, some words that have a dark, such a dark history that it's hard. They just taste bad to me. Like they, oh, they yeah, taste no, bad. The hard R in word is the one that's a solid uh no, I mm -hmm. will we will have a problem if you call if you say that to me. You know what I mean? Yeah. I'll never I'll never forget uh when a friend of mine said to me, for and just for context, I've been called white my entire life, right? Yeah. I, I've been called Oreo, white black, you know, white black, you know, whitest yeah. black guy, no, this, that, and the third, all my life. And I can deal with that. I still don't like it, but I can deal with that. But this guy, white dude, says to me, Yeah, yo, Rico, you're not a you're not a nigga. You're a you know, in the hard R. Mm -hmm. And I and yeah. I was and he was clearly trying to compliment me, saying that I was one of the good ones type of deal. And I was like, what the fuck are you talking about? Like, what? Bro, don't call yeah. me that. I don't care if you're trying to compliment me. Don't fucking call me that. Yeah. Oh, oh, and just an aside to everyone watching, if now, because it's been over an hour, so if y'all have questions or comments and such, now we will start addressing them, because at this point, we're just shooting the shit. Cool. <laughs> yeah, I'm down for any questions as well. Um, the the N-word is like an interesting thing, right? Because um, it's like uh, it's a word that I got, I, I was raised in South Africa and um, my mom, my mom is immensely like was immensely against apartheid and it still has a lot of guilt about being raised in that kind of society. And so she like, ever since I could remember, she would take me to museums and show me um, so much of like, and teach me so much about racism um, and how much, and like, and obviously connected to me as a Jewish person. Um, and so like i i learned so long for so long it was such a dirty word and so like i it all it's still like weirds me out when people say it um and you know but obviously like i it's so common for people to say especially with like a soft day like i don't oh, know what you oh, yeah. call it with a soft day um but i once i remember once being like me and my friends were drunk and um and i had a friend that was uh half black and she was telling me she was like she was like just say it say the word say it you know, say it, Eris. Um, and like, you know, just to be fun, right? And I was like, I can't, I just can't do it, right? Because like, there's just some, some words just feel like, because it's not just a word to me, because when I hear that word, I associate it with all the ways it was used, right? Yep. Um, like historically, and I, I, those images are very real to me. Um, and so yep. when I hear, and it's the same thing, like when I, when I hear the, the case alert, it's like, that that shit really hits me yeah. and um and all that kind of stuff and it doesn't feel that way for a lot of people a lot of people come numb to it um and i i know some people say that it's like they're taking back the word and it becomes their own um but i feel like that's so rare that i see that be successful uh, like, that, i think that, like that, just queer I, I think like queer is the only word i could think of that's ever been successfully taken back yeah um, that is that's the only one i would say and on that note yeah. fucking um like i don't call women bitches i don't in any context i will never call a woman a bitch i i can't do it i i mean me personally i have a weakness for women i can't fucking be mean i can't be mean to one i can't insult them mm -hmm. i can't say shit about I, I i don't have it in me so but that's and what i realized just you know and i will never hold anybody to the standard i hold myself to um it's just 
you, it's all personal. As I would say everybody has their own buttons. That's why whenever I meet people who try to act like they don't have any buttons, you know, they act like, you know, in the military, especially back in the you know anti-SJW days, anti-political correctness days, a lot of motherfuckers loved to harp on how about, about how they could, you could, you know, say whatever you want to them and nothing would bother them and type shit. And I'm like, I promise you, there's something I could say that would set you off. I promise you. You think you you yeah. think you're above you think you are above it all? Fuck that. Everybody has a line. Everyone. Anyone who Everyone. pretends like they don't. If you don't, you're not human. Kid. Then you don't have a proper brain to be able to be hurt by something. Oh yeah. You know? that, 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 which it's is a much deeper issue. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. Oh, and Jay, the, the to answer this question, yes, I do read the chats while I talk. And to the second question from Jay, did I stop smoking yet? No, I'm still working on it. I don't smoke. Uh, at two packs a day, so I'm down to one pack. I've been actively trying that. So like, you, it's, it's it's a work in progress. All right, let's see. Let's see another you know, comments. Uh, Ravignon asks, "What would co good consequences for online harassment look like? Libel charges, maybe? Yeah, oh yeah, for me, good consequences would be like, uh, I, I I should be able to straight up sue your ass. Like, I would expand libel." Uh, to be like, if you even so much as imply I'm something that I'm not, and you can't fucking prove it or some shit, you like you, because if you, if I imply you're a pedophile, like not explicitly say it because that's already defamation, but if I even so much as imply that you're a pedophile, and and which in that results in uh, harassment, you know, uh, immediately thereafter, I, I should be able to sue your ass into oblivion. Yeah, um, I to me like I wouldn't even put the onus on the individual on the on the victim of the lie like i would because to me a lie doesn't just hurt the victim like so it, it hurts society um yeah. so if something is very obviously provable as a lie right it's not something that's being debated by scholars etc right um and uh you know and you can firm you could firmly prove it one way or the other then like you know then i think that that's a crime against the community and because that i consider it a criminal act Oh, of course. But the, the, the consequence, the problem is, is that like there is a huge consequence of like that can go really south very easily. Right. Like, oh, oh, you know, because oh, yeah. of course, like what who, who controls what is truth? You know, that's no. that's a whole thing. Um, so you'd have to put a lot of things into place to make sure that that couldn't be abused, become dangerous. For me, for me that the matter is, if you the only thing that matters to me with regards to truth is if you have evidence to back it up. I don't give a fuck what anyone says unless you got evidence to back it up. The, any, I don't care if you think this or how you think or feel about anything. If you don't have evidence to back up your claim, I will. I take what you say with a grain of fucking salt. So that that's my the, my like. If you can't, if you can't. If you are not willing to, or and for damn sure can't prove it in court that that that, that what you claim to be true, then sorry, then I'll play devil's advocate. Hit I'll me. play devil's advocate, right? Like where um, there is uh, a a good um, in order to win it. This is one of the reasons why watching debates is a terrible way to learn about not about facts, right? Because um, a good interlocutor and a good as someone with good rhetoric skills and a good debater is a very different than someone that's necessarily correct. Um, you're yeah. just very good at looking oh, correct. Um, yeah. So like, and you see this in law, like this is what your jo job is as a, as a lawyer. So um, a lot of times like you can present um, there, there are a few things that I feel like I could convince most people of either side of the argument by just cherry picking evidence and I can yeah. present evidence for my side um, and I can make, one argument look very weak and I can make the other argument look very strong. The, um, and you see this in court cases, uh, recently in the, um, uh, I guess it wasn't really, it was about a year ago. Um, there was that, uh, Amber Heard Johnny Depp trial, right. Yeah. And, um, that everyone was talking about on the internet. Um, and the courts that, that, that big trial ended up landing in, uh, Johnny Depp's favor. Um, the previous court case, right. In, uh, in the UK landed in her favor. Um, very firmly. And so yeah. like, and they both had a lot of evidence to back up their claims. They both had a lot of, you know, good arguments and all that kind of stuff. And, and you have to ultimately, figure ultimately out who's correct. To, you have to really dive down into that shit, right? Who has yeah, the time but, and that, but, that's, but that's exactly that. It's that that's exactly my point is that it should be uh, litigated like that, right? It should mm -hmm. be people, both sides presenting evidence, both sides arguing as best they can uh, mm -hmm. I was on a I was on a murder trial, right? A uh, what was supposed to be a first degree murder, but it was whatever. It was a murder trial. All this dude mm -hmm. 
bludgeoned this old woman to death. Like, I, and the autopsy still haunts me to this day. Just okay. bashed her fucking, yeah, bashed her fucking skull in, and it was a mess. And of you know, of all the evidence presented, one that I'll that never leave my brain was the man singing. So uh, it, it recorded, caught record, like when they had him booked, the, he was in there singing, saying one, two, three strikes a lady, mimicking himself, bashing her skull in. Oh. Uh, but even despite all the evidence presented, there was still reason to doubt. And so he, even though he still got convicted for murder, it was it was brought down from a first degree premeditated, premeditated to uh, like second degree something. And he's going to spend uh, at least 24 years in jail. Um, yeah. But I, even though I think he should have got pre, he should have been premeditated. Uh, the, uh, the 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 standard is if there's reason to doubt, you know, that's all there is to it. But the fact is, what I want in principle is that right is to people to have to provide evidence of some kind when they uh, and then communicate what that evidence means, this, that, and a third. Yeah. Uh, because as it stands on the internet. Motherfuckers don't even have to present evidence. They can just claim something or oh, yeah. just fabricate evidence entirely. You're right. The bar is really fucking low. Like I was no. giving it way too much credit. <laughs> yeah, you know what I mean? The bar is basically non-existent online. Yeah. You know what I mean? Whereas uh in a courtroom, you come you get caught fucking fabricating your own evidence that that in itself you are liable for that shit. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? But on the internet, you can literally just make shit up whole cloth. Literally make up articles that don't actually exist, and there will be no consequences for doing that. That's the difference. Oh. Yeah, that shit drives me up the wall. Like, I also, I really hate that, and I mean, that shit happened. It happened to me. It happens to a lot of content creators, um, and it can really, like, affect you. I mean, it could affect your mental health. It can affect your relationships. Um, it could affect your career, um, and it affects society as, like, at large. Um, uh, you know, when these kinds of things can just go unanswered. Um, I It's so strange because like I, I was taught so intensely not to lie or to be very careful about making claims since I was a kid. Um, yeah. But very much intense part of like my upbringing. Um, and so like I'm always wary of making claims and stuff, especially about human beings and stuff. Like yeah, I don't know, absolutely. other people are just so willing to throw it around. No, yeah, other people are, there are too many people who are more than happy to just make shit up, yeah. genuinely. Mm -hmm. And yeah. that's what needs to be dealt with. If we don't deal with that, we're going to continue living in this post-truth era and innocent people will continue getting hurt based off the fucking lies that some asshole decided to post out there for clout. Yeah, I was, it's interesting that we're talking about this because I was just talking about this with my friend. We were, because we were thinking about, you know, the January 6th, like riots and revolt or whatever you want to call it um, yeah. that happened in the United States. It's like, I, and I mean, maybe this is somewhat of a controversial opinion. I don't know, but like, I think that if you believed in the prescriptive claim, right. That like mm -hmm. the, you know, that the election was stolen, um, that, uh, you know, that Donald Trump was literally elected and it was being stolen and there was, and democracy was um, being threatened. then I think that their actions were completely justifiable. Um, especially in the context of American history, where it's like you literally started on a revolt, like that makes sense. Um, and um, you know, like if you're trying to defend democracy, but like the big issue was it was based on a lie, right? Like yeah. so, um, it wasn't true, and so everyone was so focused, and and it was something that I didn't understand because everyone was so focused on the the effects of what they did, right? Like um, of the. Um, of like the violent actions and whether or not violence is ever justifiable and um, uh, you know, and the fact that they attacked the Capitol and all this kind of stuff. And I'm like, the, the focus should be on why did they think they needed to do that? Like why, why was it so allowed to be spread on mainstream platforms? Not even on like these like minor little areas on the internet, like on like 4chan or something, but on mainstream places to spread such misinformation um, that had such dangerous consequences that's really, really bad. And what's scary is that what happens when an election is stolen? And it happens. It happens all the places in the world to this day. Um, so, like, now it's going to be like a boy cried wolf thing where what happens no, when the election yeah, is stolen? No maybe next time no one's actually going to revolt, right? Yeah. When you actually need them to. Yeah. No, on that note, fucking, it's one of those things where it's like, uh, 
we'll cross that bridge when we come to it type deal. Cause mm-hmm. let's go back. Let's go back a bit. Right. Sure. Fucking um, accountability for the people who convinced the convinced hundred, hundreds of people to basically ruin their lives for nothing. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? Cause that, cause that's what happened, right? These people, hundreds of people are now in jail or awaiting trial and their lives are, are mm-hmm. just in shambles for nothing for effectively yeah. nothing. Uh, those people should be, I think those people should be held accountable in equal measure, but unfortunately they won't be. They'll say for the suit, the lawsuit again by uh, Dominion and Smartmatic against Fox News, OAN and all those, and all those other right wing media outlets that flat out fucking defamed them and cost mm-hmm. them uh, hundreds of millions of dollars in business. You know what I mean? Um, no, I, I, I think they should be held accountable for sure. But on a note with regards to what if it's actual, like for real, for realsies, um, election stolen, and we need people to mobilize and act and act on the whatnot. That unfortunately is just going to come down to people's judgment, right? It's yeah. it, it that's what it's just going to be. It's like because people could uh, be like, yeah, what well, this is just another one, someone trying to stoke another January six. Fuck them, whatever. Um, that that can happen for sure, but that's not something we can control for. Is what I mean. Yeah. Like this, but it's not something because the, the damage is already done. You know what I mean? January 6th happened and there's no putting that, closing that box again. There's no taking that away out of, out of the national consciousness that, you know, the that lies caused that. But what if it was true? It, it's unfortunate. It's just going to come down to people's judgment at this point. Yeah, very true. So on this question for Ravignon, duh, don't you think the person you pull the trigger on has the right to fair process though, Rico? Yeah, of course. Absolutely. I, 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 and I hope that, you know, uh, I made that clear earlier. Uh, everyone should get due process, no matter the crime, no matter how severe. Like I think everyone should get due process. Well, let's see. Uh, what else we got? I agree. I agree with that too. <laughs> what was that? Uh, let me see. Do, 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 do. I think the question is going to probably be at the bottom at this point. Mm, sorry, sorry. So where we go? Uh, what uh, rabbit? Oh, I already asked you. The revenue. I'm going to give somebody else a chance. Rico, how do you balance the stance of both being anti-free speech five and, and five minutes ago getting upset when people try to police your language about the mentally ill or homeless? Oh, easy. Uh, I don't really care if someone wants to censor me. They can, and that 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 is their right. If they if I'm saying fucking uh you know if I'm still saying crazy people. And then social media platforms, this, that, and the third, hold me by my own standard of being like, "Hey, you can't say that, so we're going to punish you for it." I, I'm not I, like I, I don't. I, the my own standard applies to me too. You know what I mean? I don't. Um, I respect. That. I don't. I, you know what I mean? I, I, if that's what happens, that's what happens. I don't. I'm not bothered by it. If that's what becomes the standard of policing people's speech and whatnot with censorship and shit, and I end up getting hit by it, I'm not going to suddenly be like, "Hey, on second thought." Uh, maybe, maybe there should be more free speech. No, I did. This is my standard. I hold myself to. And if someone with more power than me decides that that's that, I, that I've said something wrong, and then they silence me, then it is what it is. I, I this ain't my fucking uh uh day job. This is just shit I do for, do for fun. And if it, if I go big and end up getting silenced, and cool, whatever. But it'll never be the thing that you know really controls my life. But if say it did come to towards my employment, then I would definitely you know temper myself. I'd be like, okay, cool. I don't want to lose my job. So I'll watch my mouth and whatnot. But ultimately what I'm saying is that the standard with which I apply to everybody else, I also apply to myself. And I mean, and I will always apply that consistently. But yeah. Oh, and um, the Eagle Eye Valor says that you're a monster for eating nuggets without sauce. <laughs> yeah, that's just because he's American and he has bad nuggets in America. Wait, are you fucking kidding me? You eat nuggets without sauce over there? Yeah, cool. Okay, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna speak for all Canadians, but in Canada, our McNuggets are high quality because we have stricter laws, you know, with with the uh, ingredients and stuff. So, like I like I won't eat nuggets in America. You know, they're not that's, worth it to me. But in, in Canada, is, they're really good. So, and when they're and when they're that good, when they're fresh, right? Like when you know, you know, you can get some bad nuggets, right? Like that are not, you know, yeah. they're not uh, they're not fresh. They're kind of old. Your delivery driver fucked it up. Then, uh, then I'll eat them with sauce. But if they're fresh, good, good nuggets, I'm be eating those pure, you know, because I want to embrace every taste. Amen to that. 
Yeah, because American food is is a lot of at least our fast food is fucking garbage. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah Progressive American asks, "What is Eris's thoughts on the distinction between enslaved person and or slave in historic literature?" Um, I uh, I think that debate is really dumb. Like of all like the arguments of, um, I I maybe you have a good argument for it, Progressive American, but I haven't seen any good ones. To me, it's just a silly semantic debate on, you know, on what term to use. I, I do think that in general, there is a problem when people look at history with people grouping slavery all together. Um, and that's one of my biggest pet peeves when discussing um, oppression and history and all that kind of stuff, because it's just a useless uh, semantics argument, basically just distinctions without differences. Yeah, because, well, I actually think like there's a term called chattel slavery. Right. Um, yeah. And I, I would rather people use that term than something yes. like enslaved person, um, because chattel slavery is very different than, say, the slavery you saw uh, in ancient Rome. Um, and uh, also different types of slaves were treated differently based on their own like their, you know, their own status. Um, the I really, really, really don't like it when people, for example, when people look at like this, uh, the history of uh, the chattel slavery. Um, of the transatlantic slave trade with black Americans. Um, and they compare that to, uh, to a lot of other forms of slavery, whether it's like slavery with the Vikings, because the Vikings took, um, uh, you know, they took uh, um, English yes, slaves like, or like, or like, Irish, Irish uh, servitude. Like if they, it, like, it's a very idealistic view that like somehow um, someone's controlling you. So it's all the same. Right. That's not true. There's 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 uh, trust me, if you're a slave, there's some slaves that you would rather be a certain type of slave than another type of slave. And I'd rather be I'd rather be a uh, yeah, I'd rather be a serf than a a chattel slave any day of the week. Yeah. And chattel slavery was notoriously nasty. And like and if you look and to me, when someone has that opinion, I just know they haven't looked into the actual history because any person with any kind of empathy, if you read the accounts of the shit that was described of what happened and you compare that to the way you know shit's described in other types of slavery they're very different it's very very different like the type of slavery that happened in africa that was uh, slavery was very standard africa at the time right um but that type of slavery was very different right those those the people who were slaves initially and they got put on ships to the across the atlantic they were not expecting the way they were going to be treated once they got on those ships. And oh, yeah. um, even though they beat slaves their whole lives. So it's like, it's a whole other ball game. So I really, if there's a pet peeve I have, it's that we group all slaves together just based on this one characteristic of, oh, you're being controlled by another human, you're owned by human. That's minor in comparison with the way that person is treated. Exactly. Um, and I wish that we would, and I wish that we would actually distinguish that. That bothers me more. Because that Amen, to me has more meaning. Amen, sister. This next one, Eris, were you more right about Mr. Girl or Nick Fuentes? I have no idea what, con- <laughs> what the context gets to this. Um, uh, Mr. Girl, I, I don't know if I was right about Nick Fuentes. I think I, I, I just, I argued that Nick Fuentes was a incredibly intelligent um, person and people were, people dismissed him like all, Nazis and to be honest the majority of Nazis I have met are really dumb um and uh you know and they're easily debated out of things but he's a, an example of someone that like can convince you that the sky is pink he's very very good at what he does he's an intelligent guy I hate fucking praising him like this but because I'm praising him I think this guy's dangerous like I think this guy oh, should yeah, not be no. platformed anywhere I don't I don't think I think this like this guy should not be allowed to you know to speak in front of any human <laughs> like he's really he's a dangerous person because of how good it is and what he does and how good it is at spreading lies. Um, I, I really think that he could be in front of a Jewish person and he could convince them to hate Jews. And, um, and so that's really, really dangerous. That's really scary. So I, I have been very critical of other, um, and I don't, I think there's some Nazis I don't mind platforming. Right. Um, but like someone like him, I think anyone who platformed did a main, made a major dis, uh, mistake in that. And I, I hope people have realized that. Um, I guess uh, so. That's that situation. Um, I did. The, oh, no, no. Mis- I'll, I'll go ahead, go ahead, Mr. Girl. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Yeah, the the Mr. Girl thing. Um, the Mr. Girl thing was less evidence based. I guess it was much more just like an inkling. Like um, 
I just got a bad vibe from the guy. Sometimes you just get that, you know, either as a woman or a man, I don't know, like you just get a bad vibe from someone. And um, he reminded me of a lot of, there's like a, a type of character. And I mean, I don't know what's in his art. I might be completely wrong, right? This is just an instinct I get sometimes. But there's a certain type of character that you meet in academia um, where uh, they have just the same instincts as any guy without a university degree, right? Like, um, you know, to abuse women, um, to justify, you know, to justify their toxic behavior um, and, uh, you know, their rape their rape like behavior and like a lot of fucked up shit. Um, but instead of just your average Joe, now they've got a university degree, they've got some basic education behind them that they can use it, philosophy and all that kind of stuff to justify it. I've heard people philosophically justify pedophilia in academia. I've heard people um, feel like, and you know, and it, and to me, it's very easy. Like it's very, a lot of people get um, persuaded by this type of thing. And he reminded me of, a lot of that. And maybe that's me projecting my own memories of shit, but he reminded me of a lot of those types of guys that um, they intellectualize their abuse. They intellectualize yeah. their things. But if you really, if you really take off the fancy language, you take out a lot of, um, you know, you, you take out a lot of like the, the fancy philosophical terms um, and uh, you know, and the, and the self-awareness kind of discussion, right at the core, what is this person saying? And this oh, person is yeah. justifying and like uh, at the end of the day, this person is saying the same thing that, you know, some like hillbilly Joe who is justifying why he has the right to rape his wife. And yeah. they're saying the same thing. And um, and so that it reminded me of that. And that always puts a really bad taste in my mouth. Again, I don't know what's in his heart. I might be completely wrong. That was the instinct that I have. Um, and uh I also really am always wary of people who try to create communities where they gather pedophiles together um, yeah. because pedophiles uh, like being with one another. They're empowered within their own community. They're less dangerous um, when they're separated. Um, yeah. And uh, yeah, a lot of people don't know that they're very dangerous when they get together. So even if they're getting together to so-called cure themselves, it's actually very dangerous. And so, um, because that's how they share, they share victims because that's yeah. what they do all the time. They share victims, they share uh, content, they share all that kind of stuff. Um, and so I'm always very wary of that. On that note, uh, Eris, fucking, I hate, like, because I understand academic speak and all that jazz, the mm -hmm. pretty little language all too well. And my thing, and I would say my specialty is, Getting to the core of what someone's actually saying and communicating yep. and communicating. It's a good ass skill and it's a rare skill. <laughs> it is my it is my fucking bread and butter. But the yeah. reason why I started rubbing my head is because you gave me flashbacks to my conversation with Joe Lewis on this channel. Uh, <laughs> I fucking hate people who try to couch their bullshit in high-minded academic bullshit. Like, I mm -hmm. fucking hate it. Spare me the fucking uh, smart guy jargon shit. I know what yeah. you're saying, and I'm telling you what you're saying. So you can, you, you, you can either acknowledge that this is what you're saying or just stop talking to me because his whole thing is no matter how much I pointed out, like, bro, this is what you're saying. He was like, no, that's not what I'm saying. But I'm like, that is what you're fucking saying. Yeah, I, I hate that with a passion. I hate people like that. Intellectual. Did you feel like opinion. did you feel like Joe Lewis was doing that? Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. What was he, what, what, what was he doing what, it about? Oh, oh it was <laughs> it was about uh with regards to whether or not, whether Candace Owens was a better spokesperson for the you know, uh black issues than any white leftist or any white person. And I and I was basically and I'm like you you're basically saying this is what you're saying. You can you can couch it in whatever language you want, but you're yeah. saying that what makes her a better spokesperson for, on black issues is because she's black. That's the qualifier. But no, he wouldn't admit that that's what he was saying. Instead, he just kept going back to weird ass fucking language and distinctions and this that and the third. And it, if you watch it, you, you uh, uh, I'm smoking a lot of cigarettes during that talk because I I I, I wanted to scream. Because I hate when people do yeah. that, and 
it, it, it was so blatantly apparent that that's that, bro, it's because she's black and stop pretending that's not why. Fuck. Yeah, and, and uh, that type of language is actually, it's so easy to be swindled by it. I've been swindled easily. by it, right? And you can easily get, especially like if it's an area that you're not personally educated in, and we're all not educated in plenty of areas, I certainly am. Um, it can be very easy for someone to swindle you that way, right? And, um, and so, but it's, it's, it's something that I always try to be really wary of um, because like the Nazis, a lot of people forget, like, not Nazi ideology did not come out of 4chan, right? Like, right. it came out of universities. Like, it mm -hmm. came out of, like, a lot of these ideas came out of, um, were popular amongst academics. Um, and so just because, and I love, I, I, I appreciate academia for what it's done. Um, I think it's an important institution for humans, all that kind of stuff, blah, 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 right? I don't want to offend anyone um, in that world. Uh, but I... Uh, but there is, but to blindly believe that stuff and to, uh, and you can add a lot of flowery language. If you like, I challenge people to go read, you know, a lot of the original arguments for eugenics and uh, anti-Semitism, even the term anti-Semitism was a term that was created to intellectualize Jew hatred. Cause initially yeah. the term used to be called Judenhaus, which means Jew hate. Um, and in the 19th century, they were like, oh, we want to make this sound smarter and more academic because this is a real academic idea. We academically, scientifically think Jews are worse, right? Yeah. Um, and so they created anti-Semitism because it sounds scientific. Uh, and there, and I see people do the same thing today, um, whether it's on the left or the right, though, I have to admit, I see a lot more on the left when it comes to at least the intellectualizing the shit. Um, where, uh, um, though, to be honest, I don't even think they're leftists, right? Where I see people justify racism. Um, yeah. Uh, you know, they, and which is what Joe, Joe Lewis is doing there. He's that's justifying what he, that, a racist yeah. attitude with an yeah. academic idea. Exactly. And it was very blatant and apparent to me. Again, I am not a fucking genius. And I have said, and I am, I am not an expert in anything. I, I tell people this all the time. I'm not an expert in anything. So by all means, take everything I say with a grain of salt. But I'm not fucking stupid. I know when a motherfucker is, uh, is blowing smoke up my ass. You know, trying to fucking couch stupid, the stupid or racist or whatever the fuck bullshit in flowery language. I know I, I can sniff that shit out immediately. And you know I mean? I'm like, say what you mean, buddy. When what well, you mean is. is oh, go yeah. ahead. This is one of the things that I hate about identity politics in general. Right. Like there's some useful things about identity politics. But one of the biggest problems is like a lot of a lot of it relies on like stereotyping and and racist ideas um yeah. the which is what it's trying to stamp out ironically the um that attitude that joe lewis is having and i'm, I'm sure joe lewis is not intentionally being racist right like yeah. he's, he's trying to dispel racism but um and I, I don't know him as a person i just want to put that out there you know? yeah. but um but when he's talking about um you know when he's saying that she's a good representative of black people it's like it's like assuming that all black people agree with her right and yeah i you know, I'm not black, but I'm going to take a wild guess that they're a lot like Jews where they disagree on a hell of a lot of shit, you know? Yeah. And, um, and so to just make this, I hate it when people say something like, oh, like if I, when I've said my opinion about the N word, right before and right. about language in general, I, I, there are some words that for me, they feel dirty. I will not say them. And I've been told by people that say someone that's black and they'll say, as a black person, I have every right to say the N word. And, um, and who are you like um, to say that that word's bad? Right. But then I talk to someone else that's black and they also don't like the N word. Right. Yep. Like you just said, you, you didn't you like meet it. me. You meet me. I was out where I was saying, yeah. I don't like, I don't like anybody saying it black or so, otherwise. So it seems like people are, you know, people disagree. Right. They, so, they, they maintain a kind yeah. of logical, logical inconsistency or cognitive dissonance uh, where they just at the same, in the same vein are opposed to racism, but at the same time, they're perfectly okay with, with racist language. And I'm just provided that you meet the qualifier to be able to say it or engage in it. And I'm just like, no, fuck that. Cons I am consistently opposed to all of this shit. Fuck that. Yeah. And I and again, like, I don't mind people disagreeing with opinions that I have and stuff, but I I really hate it when it's based on identity. I hate it when um, I like a lot of times people will bring up whenever there's like a Jewish thing, like people will be like, oh, bring aristocracy on like she's Jewish. I literally got tagged just for being Jewish, I got tagged with Mr. Girl, who is not like, I do not want to be in a room with him. Um, mm -hmm. And we only got tagged together because we're both Jews. <laughs> and oh, I was like, God. I have nothing in common with this dude. 
<laughs> Why are you tagging me along with him? <laughs> for me, it's like this. It's like, I, I like you said, I don't care if people disagree with me. And quite frankly, I don't care if your argument is that Candace Owens is a better spokesperson for black people because she's black. I, if that's your argument, fine. But fucking say that. Spare me the flower, the flowery language. Don't yep. fucking deflect or deny that's what you're saying. Just say it. We, I, everybody who watched my stream talking to him was all saying the same thing. They were like, "Yeah, that we like that's what he's saying." Everyone, we're all wise to the shit. We know what you're saying. Mm -hmm. Just fucking say it. Spare yeah. like it, 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 it's a, it's a stupid position. But if that's your position, I'm not gonna fucking you, you, hound you. I just want you to admit that that is what you're saying, bro. Like fucking spare me. What I would almost prefer even more than that is that him admit that, like, I understand why he feels like that. Like, at least yeah. I at least I think I understand. Right. And I think it's, it's I think it's completely understandable. Right. Because like for a long time. Right. The people who are talking about black issues uh, all the time, like the are usually white. It's very rare. You have a black voice for things like I get it. I get why he's defensive about that as a black person. It makes sense. Um, it's just like I wish we would be more honest about, you know, like about why certain aspects of history make us sensitive to things um, rather than trying to justify it with like, you know, um, with some kind of academic jargon um, that often has very good academic arguments against it. And yeah. that's something that really gets to me when someone is not involved in academia, like you might be really good at, you know, at separating this bullshit, but the average person is not going to be. Um, and uh, unless they're very knowledgeable in that area. And so, yeah, yeah you can get swindled so easily from that. Um, hey. And that, and I, then taking just completely taking advantage of. That's what I'm here for, though. That's that's why I do what I do. You know what I mean? I I my goal is to um, cut through the bullshit and communicate things in a way that anybody can understand and repeat and, you know, take 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 something away from. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? I don't want I don't want anyone. I'll put it to like this. There at no point should any will, at least as far as I can uh, tell, will anybody ever come away from a conversation with me or having heard me talk and not understand clearly and concisely what it is I mean. There will, there yeah. will never be a, there will never be any plausible deniability. There will never be any kind of like, well, he, he might have meant this. I don't know. It would, it maybe, maybe you just didn't hear him right. Maybe he's, no, fuck all that. I don't do, I don't re resort to plausible deniability or implied bullshit. I will explicitly state my position, cor correct my position, whatever the case may be, but it will be clearly stated. That's why I do this. Yeah, I, uh, I completely, completely agree with that. Um, and yeah, people should just be like wary and, and critical um, of this stuff is very important. Uh, I was yeah. wondering, um, mm -hmm. I was wondering, do you think going back to the Joe Lewis thing, I, is there any situation where you do think someone's identity or their race or whatever it is, is important um, when it comes to their opinion? None, zero, zilch, ever, no, never. Mm -hmm. Because, yeah. uh, I put it to you like this with regards to their immutable, the identity that they're born into specifically. Yeah. Uh, it is not a, it is not a valid qualifier, right? To me, because um, you, I would say, I don't understand the culture around rich people because I've never been rich. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? But I can understand it in that I can read about it and, and understand. Yeah. I can read about it. I can watch it. I can uh, observe it in a, in, a, in a clinical sense. You know what I mean? That's how I look at these things, right? Yeah. Say for like the, the what you're born with or anything that specifically happens to you. I don't think there's any particular thing any one of us can experience that the other can't understand, basically, is what I'm saying. Like, forget what I was saying about like what you're born into. Ignore that part. Just forget about that part. What I mean is... I don't think, as I just said, I do not think that there is anything that we cannot understand about others, even if we have personally never experienced it ourselves. I think we can all understand it because it, one, it requires a degree of empathy. And even if you don't have yeah. empathy, you can still, from a, a in a clinical sense, just observe and be like, okay, this led to this. Because that's what we humans do. We can observe patterns and understand these things. We can categorize things. We can yeah. uh, conceptualize things. We can understand these things even without ever having to fucking experience it and, and advocate for the well-being or, or, or against that person just off of that. Like, I don't need to fucking sexually assault a child to know 
uh, that it that it's wrong. I just know that that's just I, I don't need to experience that to come to any kind of conclusion about whether or not it's right or wrong. I just I, I know. Yeah. Because See, I I'm, look, what's up? I'm divided on the issue for me where I end up like and I don't really know where I sit um, because on one hand for me like there have always been things that I've read about intellectually is like I read about what a Holocaust denier was it was very different to truly meet them um, yeah. the there I've I've read about a lot of shit that I've actually in the last few months I've been really focused on living in the real world instead of living in video games and a lot of shit is very different like face to face um, yeah. and uh, experiencing something. I used to be very, um, uh, you know, I used to think catcalling was not a big deal at all. In fact, like, I'll be honest, when I heard women complaining about catcalling, I thought they were being kind of like privileged, like privileged people, like in the yeah. West. Like, I was like, oh, that's, that's really cringe. Like, um, the, uh, it just didn't, especially coming from South Africa, where you're like regularly afraid of being legitimately raped all the time and potentially getting yeah. HIV. Like, and then here it's like, it's like, oh, like some some guy ogled you that boohoo. Um, and uh, and so whenever I heard women complain about it, I'd kind of roll my eyes like in my head, you know. Yeah. And um, but I moved to the city and uh, and at first and I and so what do you know, I'm starting to get cat called. Um, and at first I was like, oh, OK, not that big of a deal. Right. After a week of it happening regularly over and over again, it's starting to feel bad. You know, yeah. it's starting to feel really bad. And suddenly I'm getting really uncomfortable. I get I'm getting this feeling inside me that like I couldn't ever intellectualize, which is like this feeling of like embarrassment. Right. Like I can't right. even express, but it's like um, it's like this really nasty, embarrassed feeling um, that I feel whenever it happens all the time. And it's almost like my barriers got broken down. And so and now I'm like it was something that I couldn't empathize or intellectually truly understand until I experienced it. Um, and now I have a very different view of it. So, uh, and I wish I'd been able to, you know, no. but I had well, limits. Yeah, I, I was, so there are things I, that I have limits of, right? And so yeah. on that end, I understand why someone's identity can be, you know, can really impact their opinion and can give more weight to it. Um, and I, I think like, especially with experience, but on the other hand, it can also do the exact opposite. I think like it's very likely that me getting ogled and having that feeling, that emotional feeling is actually making me biased, right? Mm -hmm. um, because it happened more recently, it's happened more regularly. So now it feels like a bigger deal than it really objectively is. In reality, like, you know, it's really not that big of a deal compared to other things women are experiencing around the world, right? Yeah. But because it's happening regularly, I'm feeling the emotion, it feels like a, a massive deal. So um, it's just as likely that me as a Jewish person, even though I'm more likely to know about a lot of Jewish issues, right, and be knowledgeable on it, I'm also more likely to be biased when it comes to yeah. Jewish issues. So yeah. to me, like, it kind of works against each other and for each other. And so I end up kind of just being like, it's overall zero, you know? Let me, so let I end up if... in the same area that you are, like where it doesn't impact it because it's like they both balance each other out. Yeah. No, let me see if I can help with that then. Fucking hmm. basically, if there's one thing, uh, one thing I wasn't aware of, but, and I think most men aren't, but I, you know, became aware of, right, is what I like to call male privilege in that I, or in the obviously depends on the male, yada, yada, yada. But generally speaking, mm -hmm. most men ain't got to worry about being cat called, or ogled, or, uh, you know, potentially sexually assaulted, uh, potentially sexually assaulted in the street or, or at their car or this, that, and the third. Most men ain't got to worry about that, especially big 300 pound black dude like me. Uh, and so I walk around with a kind of sense of, with, with, uh, Really, no sense of danger, no, no caution. Really, obviously, I'm not invincible, and I don't think I am. I'm not, but I have a kind of blase attitude about things, simply because I have never had any reason to think anybody would do anything to me, because no one's ever given me a reason to do anything about me. So I would say that blind that you could argue that that would have blinded me to the reality that this happens to women. But no, I because I've seen it enough heard enough from women, enough to, even though I have not personally experienced that feeling, I can understand that it's a terrible feeling and that it's a terrible experience. And that uh, the reason I don't experience it is because of, um, you know, my my privilege as a man living in a world mm -hmm. where, you know, uh, no, men and women ain't exactly, you know, coming at me like that. Maybe I don't look good enough. I don't know. But um, 
it's I do understand because I just from hearing your experience, I can understand what that that must be embarrassing. I, I would like just as an, I, and what I do is I connect it to something else that embarrasses me. Right. Um, uh, kind of, Y'all might not believe this, but I'm a little I, I, I don't like attention. I know mm. crazy for a guy who's showing his face and name and such online and such. But what, a part of me doesn't like attention. A part of me, and that part of me is sometimes very loud. Sometimes I get very uncomfortable. Sometimes I, when people give yeah. me attention, when people want my attention, it may, and I just kind of connected to that. Yeah, it's not exactly the same thing, and it's not and it's for damn sure not the same context. But I connected to that as you're getting unwanted attention, you're getting mm. unwa- unwanted compliments and stares because it's like you were with your boyfriend or girlfriend or whatever the fuck, uh, and they were you know cat calling you, you know what I mean? You'd be, you'd be like, oh, that's one thing, you know, that's fine. But it, when it's from fucking strangers, well, that, that it make you very fucking uncomfortable. So if a stranger, mm-hmm. so, and I just kind of connect it from there. It's just like, if a fucking stranger is saying some shit to me that I don't want them saying to me, I'd be very fucking uncomfortable or just fucking, or straight up fucking angry. So that's yeah. how I, that's how I conceptualize it all and how I'm able to understand situations and things that I personally have not experienced. You know what I mean? Yeah. Then you're better than me because I, I definitely have a tendency as a woman to like think like, oh, if the problem was if it wasn't a problem for me, then it's not a problem for anyone else. Yeah, um, it, it, I, I know? think it's, it's a matter of, you know, I, I'm, and I don't want to say you, you lack the empathy to understand <laughs> that that which doesn't uh, apply to you. But I mean, that, that's just basically it. Some people are more empathetic than others, I guess. I don't know. It's not necessarily a, it's not a moral aspect to that. It's just, you know, people are different. You know, mm-hmm. people conceptualize things differently. Yeah, I think like there's there's just like sometimes like I I thought like I could intellectualize everything and so and it was there was something that I missed like when I when I thought about catcalling I missed about the frequency I it was yeah. something that I didn't think about right I I was whenever I imagined catcalling I imagined it as this one off situation um it wasn't like I never it it was, it was something I missed was how how often it happens right how yeah. it'll be like the eighth time it happened in that day. Um, and like how that will start to get to you, how you'll start to get anxious to crawl, you know, that intersection has those guys there, right? Things like that. Um, that was something that I just never thought of, you know, just made a miscalculation, right? Um, but yeah, that's why sometimes I get called to pick me and that's like, I was like, in that moment, maybe I was. (laughs) In that moment, maybe you were, but that's neither here nor there. I mean, you learned and- we can move on. You know what I mean? Yeah. So on the next thing, uh, Dionysus said, Rico, you mentioned you were very anti-death penalty, but when you brought up the scumbag who harmed that kid uh, that you knew, you described the death penalty with extra steps. You mm-hmm. hoped he would be jobless, lonely, and would die under a bridge. I never said I was against the death penalty. In fact, I was very clear that in a better in a better world, I'd be all for it. It's just we don't live in that world, so I don't want to you know pull the trigger in that sense. But I am pro the uh, whatever you want to call it death with death with extra steps for the worst people in this world happily i will happily endorse that if if it really is, it's just there's a difference between uh, being ostracized socially because of the horrible thing that you did versus the state you know uh deciding your fate you know what i mean and and then getting it wrong because if you're convicted for the thing for a horrible fucking crime like sexually assaulting a child and some shit, um, and you subsequently end up ostracized by your community, the city, whatever the fuck, no one wants anything to do. You no one wants to hire yada yada yada. That is um, still far and away is better than the state having the power to just unilaterally fucking murder you. Oh, uh, I I think pedophiles should get the death penalty. Ideally, yeah. Like- yeah, for like 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 pedophiles, pedophiles like under, like you know, like prepubescent, a hundred percent, no no question for me. No no question. The that they do. And especially when you look at how repetitive their crimes are, it's like there's no saving that shit. You know. It's like, yeah yeah. Let me see if there's any other questions because it's been two hours and I uh, yeah I gotta go. Uh, someone said, uh, Eagle Eye Valor says, well, a perfect person to talk to me would be uh, Peacecraft. I don't know who that is, but judging by the tone of how you said that, that sounds like a fucking nightmare for me. Uh, definitely not a racist person, Mr. Name, Mr. Fanatic. Oh, 
Uh, the Eagle Eye Valor. I don't know if you're still in the chat, but actually, Fanatic reached out to me, said he began because he saw my debate with Joe Lewis, and uh, he wants to talk. He wants to come on the show and talk to me. So I like Fanatic. Yeah, that's all. That ought to be a fun conversation. I don't agree I, with I, him on everything, but I, he's a good dude. He's a good dude. Yeah, no, I know it doesn't seem bad, but I'm sure we'll we'll uh, um, have uh, an interesting conversation one way or the other, especially about that particular topic. Uh, let's see. Do, 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 do. Beta boy. Hey, beta boy. What's good, brother? He's here. Uh, good, good to see you. Uh, da, 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 da. Rico Rance. Ask Ares how, a heavy, how heavy a microphone is and how much damage it can potentially do. What? <laughs> it's a it, comment about, I tweeted about uh, Cardi B. She threw, she threw a microphone at an audience member. Um, oh, yeah. I don't know about that. Yeah. Very, yeah. Yeah. And so I was like, and, I, and people were like, oh, that's not that big of a deal. It's like, I don't know. Like, I've held some microphones. They can be really dangerous. I could kill oh, someone yeah. with a microphone. You can, you can kill someone with a microphone for sure. Yeah, 100%. My microphones are fucking um, mini bricks. Some shit's hurt. Yeah. Yeah, hell yeah. So it's like, I don't know. It felt like a very, very disproportional response, especially it's like after she gets the drink. It's not like someone's like actively attacking her, right? Then if she brings out the microphone, I'm like, okay, right? But it's like, it's like in revenge. So. Um, yeah. yeah, yeah. Oh, and now yeah, how's Zelda yeah, doing? Yeah. Sonny O'Kay yeah. asked, how's Zelda doing? Oh, um, Zelda's great. Zelda's my dog. So Aww. She's, very, she's very good. Yeah. Hell yeah. And Beta Boy, um, you got me on that one. It says, it seems like you don't mean that one's identity has nothing to do with their ability to speak to the experience. Well, like it shouldn't be the end all be all. Yeah, that's that's what I mean. And sorry for not being more clear about that. All right. So it's been two hours. It's been a great conversation. How are you feeling? Yeah, I feel great. It was lovely to chat to you. You know, it was a really nice first step back into this world. And um, it was so cool to be introduced to your content. Like, I really respect what you do. I think you're like a very, like, you know, unique voice in this space. And uh, it was honestly really cool to get to talk to you and stuff. And with your military experience, like, I didn't even know about that. That's insanely interesting. You know, it, 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 the, my military experience informs a lot of my politics in no my doubt. left wing, yeah. my left wing po political or not left, my left wing mm -hmm. policy choices more so than people would imagine. Like, because I've said this to someone else before, but a lot of people seem to think that like you know all the, the military turns everybody into conservatives and shit. And I'm just like, mm -hmm. oh no, because most of the motherfuckers in the military experience universal health care for the first time in their lives. Yeah, and they <laughs> and they love that shit. And when they get out and lose it and see how society is with, you know, without it, it's they like it changes people. They're like, whoa, what the fuck? I have to yeah. pay all this for health care now? Yeah, you know what I mean? It changes people. And, oh, yeah. and the military, I, I say to people, is ripe for the picking for leftists if anyone felt so fucking inclined. But it seems a lot of leftists don't want to touch uh, veterans for some fucking reason. So fuck them. But yeah. Yeah, I am not surprised at all. Yeah, but uh, that said, thank you. I really do appreciate. It. I reached. Out. I've known about you for quite some time. Not not like in depth to everything you know that happened and such, but like I've known about you well enough to be like this would be someone I could have an interesting conversation with. But I stopped back in the day, you know, two years ago and such, because I you know life and work and such. But yeah. now that I'm back, yeah. you were one of the you were one of the people that crossed my mind. I was like, I, I it was just like I gotta reach out to her and see if she. Oh, I'm to honestly her. flattered. Like, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hell yeah. And, uh, yeah. We I mean, have we have a common friend, um, a uh, layman, with Joseph. Layman, yeah, yeah, I love that guy. Yeah, he told me because like because he messaged me and uh, and I just mentioned it in my friend in my personal Discord and he was like, yeah, that guy's that guy's legit, Rico. Yeah. Hell yeah. yeah, that's what that's what I like to hear. I want people saying good things about me because yeah, uh, yeah, you say lots of good things. Uh, good, good. Because I'm like, I mean, it, it, I mean, people say bad things about me. That's fine, but as so long as it's true, right? I don't give a shit. Yeah. If, if, you know what I mean? If you, if you if people making up shit about me, that's one thing. Fuck them for that. But if you got something mm -hmm. bad to say about me and it's true, then that's fair. Like I can be loud, I can be abrasive, uh, it, 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 I can be hard headed and dumb. Sure, those mm -hmm. are all true, but don't make shit up about me. That's all I ask. Mm -hmm. That is all I mm -hmm. ask. But uh, last thing I would say to you, um, you are welcome to come back anytime about to talk yeah, about. I'd be happy to. Anything if you if if not if not you don't feel like talking to somebody else about something, you say, hey, I want to I want to yell you know go back and forth with Rico about this particular topic. The door is always open to you. I hope you know that. And 
Well, um, yeah, because I, just... I would love to talk to you sometime about your military experience like that. Oh God, I I could I could talk about my military experience all day. So much fucking stupid shit happened. Yeah, that's <laughs> I love that shit. So you know, like I love hearing about that because I'm a military. Uh, I I study military history. So um, oh yeah, really, I love talking to people who've experienced it and stuff. So. Um, oh yeah, it, I could talk about it all day, and I would love to, and we cool. and we'll definitely do so next time. Uh, cool. But the final yes. final thing I want to say to you in the audience is not just you are welcome on anytime. My platform is open to everybody, and anonymous or not, everybody, big channel, small channel, you, I don't care because my my thing is I want to talk to everybody as many people as I can. So to anybody in the audience who've listened to this talk up to this point, if there's any particular topic you want to talk to me about, or if you just want to shoot the shit on my channel with me over there for an hour or so, reach out, DM me on Twitter, or look at the description below. You'll find all the ways to reach me and we can take it from there. So that's what I do. So with that said, let us say our goodbyes. You got any last thing you want to say to the audience before you go? Um, if uh, you can, you should follow me on Aristocracy TV on Twitter. Um, I always update. Well, I guess it's now called X. Um, I, I make all my updates there. Uh, I'm hoping to come back to, to streaming and I might be revealing my actual face there. So because I keep watching, keep watch for that. Um, and if you want uh, me to teach you guitar, let me know. DM me there. Hell yeah. And if y'all don't already, if y'all don't already know who the fuck I am, well, I, I'll say it again. I am Dorico L. Baker. Uh, y'all can call me Rico. You find me as Rico underscore rants on Twitter and, and just Rico rants on YouTube. And I guess Rico underscore rants on Twitch there. Okay. Don't look me up on Twitch. Don't even bother. I have like three accounts. It was it's long story, complete accidents. Don't worry about it. <laughs> just don't even, don't even bother looking me up on Twitch. There are three different Rico rants and it's all me. And it's because I'm a fucking <laughs> idiot. Don't worry about <laughs> I've it. I've done Do that before. Not, yeah. And uh, also, if you are to look me up or refer anyone to me, I really want to be I got I, I always forget to stress this. I am Rico Rants. There's another guy named Rico's Rants. Cool guy. But do not fucking go to him. He's a fucking movie reviewer or some shit. I don't remember. That's his fucking thing. I'm Rico Rants singular. So keep that in mind. And all that said, thank you all for coming. I hope you've enjoyed the talk. And Eris, you stick around for one second, and I'm about sure. to end it and whatnot. Right. Everybody, have a good night. Yeah, see you, everyone.